What is up everyone? I'm meteorologist Andrew Buck Michael. Man, it is a hot and muggy day today. It's going to be a muggy night tonight for some football. For the game tonight, we're looking at Worthington Kilbourne taking on Thomas Worthington at Thomas Worthington. It's going to be warm. Temperatures going to be in the low 80s for the start of the game. We slowly drop into the 70s during the second half. Mix of sun and clouds, but at least it will be dry. No rain, but we will be dealing with high humidity for the game. So make sure you're staying hydrated as well this evening. Cool weather on the way for us. Let's go to the sidelines now and quickly check in with Kelly Instance. Hey guys, it's the Woe Town Showdown. Only about two miles to separate to these two schools. This is a game that both communities and players circle on their calendar every single year. The rivalry favors Kilbourne, but as of late, it's been back and forth. And I caught up with Kilbourne head coach Mike Edwards, who told me they've been practicing this one since July. They work in Thomas Worthington periods, first team offense versus first team defense. And guys, we'll see whose preparation pays off more tonight. Kelly Ann, thank you very much. Tonight's kickoff is sponsored by MakeItSense.org. Scan the QR code on the screen to get youths and adults the help they need to quit smoking and vaping. Thomas Worthington won the toss. They have elected to receive the football. And Worthington Kilborn gets set to kick the football away. A coin toss tonight brought to you by Hilliard Lawn and Garden, the proud sponsor of tonight's coin toss. And again, Thomas Worthington winning the toss. They will take the football. We are ready for the Wotown Showdown. You got to love that name. And Kilborn kicks the football away. And we are ready for week number two of high school football. The Cardinals with the football as we get things started here tonight. The opening kick, a good return here getting out across the 25-yard line for Thomas Worthington was Tyler Benner. Good return there, and the Thomas Worthington offense will come onto the field for the first time tonight. And there again, the Hilliard Lawn and Garden coin toss, again won by Thomas Worthington, the home team in this game tonight under head coach Mike Pichetti. So they get the football to start the game here this evening, and they'll put this offense on the field, which last week totaled up 315 yards in a thrilling come from behind win over Columbus Beechcroft by the final of 27 to 26. They're guided by a freshman at the quarterback spot, Gray Keegley. And they'll go out of the spread formation to get things started. Keegley, a 6'1", 185 pounder. Jeff and I were on the field prior to the game looking at the young man and 6'1", uh, didn't seem fair to the young man, did it, Jeff? No, it didn't. And we got an encroachment right there on the first play. You can tell both teams fired up to go and you know, this is a team, you take a, a kid that's 14 years old and you give him the keys to the Ferrari? I mean, are you kidding me? You're going to let this kid run the football team? But what's happened is this kid has taken over. He has done terrific in that first week, and he is a student of the game. I'll share with you some stories about how he developed himself as an eighth grader getting ready for this opportunity. And that flag in the play sponsored by the U.S. Army. First play from scrimmage is a handoff. Isaiah Bowers, the workhorse last week, has the first touch of the night, and he's out across the 40-yard line. Bowers last week rumbled for 178 yards and 25 totes of the football, including a couple of scores last week. We take a look at the starting lineups presented by the University of Toledo with more than 270 degree programs. The University of Toledo can help you find the right path. Explore more at utoledo.com. Watch that offensive line. There some good ones up front for Mike McKetty's football team. Isaiah Bowers just touched the football for the first time tonight. He is a back to keep an eye on. It was a first down game as the play carried out to the 43-yard line, and it's Bowers again trying to shake his way free out near the athletic insignia midfield here at Hamilton Field at Thomas Worthington High School, a gain of three for Isaiah Bowers. We check the Worthington Kilborn defense. We talked about Ben Davis, but keep an eye on number 55 at one of those tackle spots. Hizzy El Toom. Jeff, he's a good one across that front line for Worthington Kilborn. They're really proud of what they're trying to do on defense over there. At the beginning of this football game, you can see that the Worthington Cardinals are trying to get the edge on this defense, running left around the edge, running right around the edge. And Isaiah Bowers, a kid that averaged over seven yards a carry last week. Second down and seven call for the Cardinals of Thomas Worthington, the freshman to throw, and a good pass to Tyler Bennett to the near side. And he is brought down shy of the midfield stripe. Poise in the pocket, noticeable right away, Jeff, by the freshman. Yeah, again, you take a young kid like this in, in, a, in a game with a, with a lot on the line because of the rivalry, watch how he sees his receiver. This ball is delivered on target, on time, by the young freshman quarterback. This is a good start to the drive, but you got to be able to convert here on third down. Gain of three on the pitch and catch out to the 49, a third down and four upcoming for Thomas Worthington. They were just two of 12 on third downs last week in the come from behind win over what Coach Mike Piketty called a very good Columbus Beechcroft team, a squad he thinks is going to win a lot of games this season. Just underway a couple of minutes in. 
Kegley back to throw. Again, throws a dart to the near side and stepping out of bounds after making the catch. Dominic Perini, and it's a first down. The sophomore with the catch for Thomas Worthington, and the Cardinals are on the move in Kilbourne territory at the 43. We talked about this freshman quarterback. Look at the presence on the field. He's locked in on a receiver. That's okay if you've got yourself running a quick out pattern. You want to locate that receiver as quickly as you possibly can. Dominic Perini had one reception a week ago for 20 yards, but it went for a touchdown. First and 10 at the, about the 43-yard line for the Cardinals. And that play gained eight. And Thomas Worthington on the move. Cardinals in the division of the OCC, the Cardinal division. Keegley to throw again, and it's Perini again with his second catch, and he angles towards another first down brought to you by Buckeye State First uh, by Buckeye State Bank. Buckeye State Bank, together we win. And that is close to the first down. It's going to be just a little shy as they continue to advance in Kilbourne territory to the 34-yard line. Bubble screen, and look at the job that Tyler Benner, number five, is doing down the field blocking ahead of the receiver as he catches the football. Again, good combination there between quarterback and receiver. Bowers coming to the near side, has the first down across the 30 and stumbles down as he rumbles across that 30-yard line and gets to the... Kilbourne 28 yard line. Pick up of a half dozen for Isaiah Bowers. He became the workhorse in the game last week. You see that 25 carry total. He was the go to guy in that game winning drive as they moved down the field to get the game winning field goal against Beechcroft last week. He's a 5'10, 220 pound senior. Facing a first down and 10 now. Buckeye State Bank, first down. Back to throw is Keekley to the far side now. And this ball is a jump ball. And oh, what a catch on the far side. It's a first and goal upcoming. That one was thrown up for grabs over there. And going airborne and hauling it in on the far side was Aiden Llewellyn, a 6'1", 190-pound senior. Jeff Logan just basically won a jump ball along that far side yeah, sideline. This is not a freshman throw. This is terrific. You cannot play defense with your back to the to the uh, quarterback like that. You got to be able to get your head on a swivel, turn back, and find that football. Great pitch, great throw, great catch out there, and the Cardinals are dealing inside the ten. First down and goal. First at the four yard line, a gain of 24 yards. Here's Bowers with the carry and pushes the pile towards the goal line. Does not get in. Isaiah Bowers had a couple of touchdowns last week, and. Brought down shy of the goal line there. And again, when we talk about this freshman at quarterback, Greg Keegley, the, the presence he shows in the pocket, Jeff, that's rare for a, a player of that age group, a freshman. You know, and, and you and I were talking about on the field before the game, just kind of watching him warm up. I said, you know, physically it doesn't look like a freshman. And the way he was going through warm-ups out there, he didn't warm up like you would expect a young kid with maybe the bright lights to get him. This kid is fully connected in this game. Ball's on the one. Keegley turns, hands off. Bauer stumbles into the end zone. Touchdown. Tom Thomas Worthington. The Cardinals go right down the field and push it in for the score. And Worthington, Thomas Worthington takes the lead. That's another Ramos roofing touchdown. Get your free estimate on a roof by calling or texting 614 761 roof. Isaiah Bowers with his third touchdown of the season. Boy, if you're head coach Mike Paquetti at this point, you got to ple be pleased with the push of your offensive line. They were able to run the football with strength to be able to go back and forth running and throwing the football evenly balanced throughout. Extra point kick is up and it is good. And just like that, Marty, seven points on the board for the Cardinals. Max LaProd with the extra point. And the Thomas Worthington Cardinals in the Wotown Showdown go down the field and score in their initial drive. Worthington Kilbourne gets the football when we come back. Our Toyota Friday Night Rivals game, Thomas Worthington on top of Kilbourne, seven to nothing. Toyota's national sales event is on. Make the most of summer with a new Toyota. We want the great Tacoma. Great Tacoma coming in hot. On it. Highlander Hybrid. Highlander Hybrid on the double hang. Here we go. That Red Rav 4. Run a Red Rav 4. Hit the deck. Now that's how you holler. Make some off-road memories in a legendary new 4Runner or the best-selling Tacoma, which you can get with 3.99 APR financing plus two years no-cost maintenance. Come in today. Toyota. Let's go places. 7-0 Thomas Worthington with the lead as they march right down the field and score on the opening drive of the night. And Worthington Kilbourne will get the football 
for the first time in this one here this evening. The scoring summary brought to you by Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health Board of Franklin County. Nine plays, 74 yards. It took almost three and a half minutes for the Thomas Worthington Cardinals to get the first points of the night. An impressive way to start the game, Jeff. You know, Marty, when most guys are getting ready to start a football game, the captains will go out there and say, hey, if we win the toss, we'll defer. We want to take, you know, decide what we need to do at halftime. What do the Cardinals do? They win the toss and say, give us the ball, and they shove it right down to throw to the Wolves. Let's see if they can respond. Kilbourne will get the football as the kick sails into the end zone, and the Kilbourne offense will come onto the field. They struggled mightily last week in just trying to find some rhythm. This is a team full of new faces, inexperienced players getting their first crack under the lights on a Friday night, and it it cost them last week. They had some mistakes. It snapped one over the head of the quarterback. They had some other issues just trying to get their feet wet on a Friday night, and that's one of the things that head coach Michael Edwards talked about, just trying to get everybody to calm down and make sure that they can get the offense run the way they need it to be run. And Cameron Jen Angeli, the quarterback, a 6'1", 175-pound junior, showed flashes last week, Jeff. He did. A couple mistakes there from a offensive standpoint, but pretty solid. They're going to come out throwing the football right off the plate. And how about the coverage right away coming up from that uh, linebacker free safety position, outside linebacker Jaden Williams. Jack Steele with the catch of the Jen Angeli first throw of the night. There's the University of Toledo starting lineup for the Worthington Kilbourne Wolves. Tyler Bussard at that wideout spot is a guy that will also move into the backfield and carry the football for this offense. He's a guy to keep an eye on. Good size across that front line as well, too. They had one change, Brady Baringhouse getting the start at right tackle in the game tonight for Worthington Kilbourne. Throw to the far side of the field now. This is Kieran Morley with the catch and stood up and knocked backwards. Good pursuit by that Thomas Worthington defense. University of Toledo can help you find the right path. Explore more at utoledo.edu. Third down and eight for Kilborn. Jen Angeli rolling to throw, evades the pressure momentarily, was grabbed and brought down from behind. As he started to break out of the pile, he was grabbed around the ankles and dropped. Noah Walters in on the stop for Thomas Worthy. Good pursuit by Walters to track down the quarterback and prevent him from picking up a first down. That's your middle linebacker running laterally, doing a really nice job of spying the quarterback, making sure they pay attention. Obviously, they understand the pressure from the nose guard. Francis Brew, number 55, who we talked about before, is a concern. He is difficult to block. So what they've done is they're coming out, throwing it fast and moving the pocket that time with the rollout. Fourth down and eight upcoming for Kilbourne. We're almost halfway through quarter number one here at Thomas Worthington. The Cardinals on top, seven to nothing. Gavin Scott on to kick the football away. Brenner with the punt at the 45-yard line and backwards falls into the Kilbourne territory at the 49-yard line, and that's where Thomas Worthington will put their offense back onto the field. Thanks to Kroger Great Lakes Distribution Center, tonight's game is being streamed live on the ABC6 YouTube channel, the ABC6 News app, and on the CWColumbus.com. Glad to have you with us wherever you're watching tonight's game. Thomas Worthington leads Worthington Kilbourne 7 to nothing. Annual showdown game between these two programs. One on one side, the north side of 270 uh, on the north side of Columbus. Just a very short drive for Kilbourne to get here. Plays being signaled from the sideline. Freshman quarterback we mentioned, total control. Again, to the near side, Perini with his third catch of the game. And from the 49-yard line, Perini with a short gain out to the 46. You know, Marty, you'll take that on first down every time. If the corners are going to play that soft for the Kilbourne Wolves, they're going to take that quick throw out into the flat. And you can see they're throwing the ball into the boundary. So that's a shorter throw, able to get there quicker and give the receiver time to make a move. Keegley was involved in a duel for the starting quarterback job in the preseason with Preston Watkins, who tweaked his leg in preseason. And according to head coach 
Mike McKinney, that's what elevated Keekley to the starting quarterback position, and it is a job that looks like right now he's going to hang on to for a while. Here's a quick flare out to Benner, who had the kick return a moment ago, and Tyler Benner gets close to another first down. He got to the 42-yard line, picked up about four, so it'll be third down and short upcoming. Marty, this is like pitch and catch in the backyard with your best buddy. <laughs> you know, he's wide open, and if they're going to give you that much room, you're going to continue to take it. Now, what it does set up, and we talked about this last week, you throw those little quick passes out to the flat, go ahead and give him the fake, give him the shoulders, and then find somebody deep going down the sideline. Again, the play being signaled in from the near side sideline. The offensive coordinator is Mike Owens for Mike McKetty's staff. And here's Keegley back to throw now. Again, just throws a seed to the near side. And making the catch is Perini evades one man and has the Buckeye State Bank first down. Buckeye State Bank, together we win as he moves across the 35-yard line to the 34, gain of eight for Thomas Worthington. Yeah, fundamental play where you've got the slot receiver running straight. You've got the wide receiver cutting in behind him. And there's got to be communication in that secondary between the safety and the cornerback in terms of who you're taking. A lot of space over here at the bottom of your screen. Two wides to the near side for Thomas Worthington, and we have a flag. And we'll see what this flag is all about. Sponsored by the U.S. Army. Ball. Encroachment. Defense number 55. Thank you, Terry Williams. Tonight's referee. And that will move the ball to the 29-yard line, and that gives Thomas Worthington a first down. First and... Five upcoming after the walk-off. Keegley, Bowers, nice move past the defender across the 25-yard line. Five steps, another man inside the 20, and is brought down at the 16-yard line. Good hard running again by Isaiah Bowers. Has the ability, Jeff, to make a defender miss. Yeah, this is pretty good stuff here. You're going to play defense now. If you're watching from home, this is what you're viewing as in the secondary. How are you going to put your hands on this guy? He's like a fire hydrant. There's nothing to grab onto <laughs> as he makes his way down the field. I was watching his kid warm up out there. You know, he's been bouncing outside, bouncing outside. This time he cut it up inside. Nice run by Isaiah Bowers. That's kind of the way you used to run, wasn't it? When you don't give him when you don't, carry the football. Don't give him anything to grab. <laughs> First down to 10 as we go under four minutes to go here in this first quarter. Thomas Worthington once again on the move, and here's Keekley again back to throw. It passes oh. intercepted, stepping right in front of that pass and stealing it for Worthington Kilborn and a good return back across the 45. That's Lacey Connor at one of the linebacker spots, and he read that perfectly. I don't know that Keekley ever saw him, Jeff. He didn't. That's a freshman being a freshman. The only way you're going to get better is going to have these kinds of things happen. Get in the film room, see what you're doing. He has to read that linebacker dropping back into coverage, and you can see him right there underneath. That was a great job by Connor Lacey dropping back underneath coverage in the quarterback. Gray Keegley actually is the one that runs him out of bounds, but again, they had things rolling on the offensive side, but the Wolves in this rivalry game get the first turnover. And that was a back shoulder throw, but not the kind you want to have as far as throwing the football. And there's a sideline warning against Worthington Kilborn. Hey, when you lose the first week 21 to nothing, and you come into the rivalry game and you have a pick, you have every right to celebrate over there on the sidelines, right? <laughs> first down and 10 for Worthington Kilborn. Handoff goes to Tyler Bussard getting the First hand off of this drive, Bussard gets across the 40 to the 38-yard line. So a pick up of three. We haven't had a chance to talk much about this Cardinals defense that had to replace seven starters off last year's team. Last week they gave up 26 points in the game against Beechcroft, but came up big when Mike McKetty, who is the co-defensive coordinator, his staff needed them to rise up in the second half of that game against Beechcroft. Second down and eight after the two-yard pickup. This is Bussard again trying to sweep to the far side. And a lot of guys wearing red shirts over there to escort him out of bounds in front of the Kilbourne bench. Noah Walters in on the stop, able to string that play out. It is a first down for Worthington Kilborn. 
you know, a week ago, 13 carries for this young man for 28 yards. Again, not a lot went right for them in week number one, but this is a good little running back for the Worthington Kilborn Wolves. Jen Angeli back to throw, flushed out of the pocket. He's being chased. He'll roll to the near side and a dangerous throw that is knocked away. Good coverage over there by that Thomas Worthington defense as Aiden Llewellyn was in at one of those defensive back spots and did a good job of tipping that pass away. Yeah, Jen Angeli really had no chance of being able to look downfield for a receiver. And Marty, you said dangerous throw out there in the flat late. Uh, that's one that you could have picked off, but fortunately they've got the ball back in their hands. Second down and 10. First quarter goes under the three minute mark. Thomas Worthington with a seven nothing lead over their district rivals from Worthington Kilbourne. The Angel get together between these two programs. Jen Angeli to throw near side and the pass is caught and outside the 20 yard line on the reception was Cameron Fisher. And Fisher right out of bounds near the marker to the near side. And it is good enough for another first down for Worthington Kilbourne, a Buckeye State Bank first down. Buckeye State Bank, together we win. Good job of getting that ball out fast that time in the flat and two receivers downfield blocking for their teammate, able to create the first down and keep the drive alive. The Connor Lacey interception set all this up for Kilbourne, and the Wolves are on the move with a first down and 10. This is Dussard rumbling his way through defenders, gets into the second level, and across the 15-yard line near the 10 is where he is brought down. Marty, you mentioned earlier that uh, this is where this team ran into trouble a week ago, getting the ball inside the red zone, and that's where they self-destructed. They had a snap go over their head. They had a fumble. Let's see if the Worthington Kilbourne Wolves can keep things together here and capitalize on this great field position. Gain of nine. It's a second and one upcoming. Inside again is Bussard. He's on the go, and he barrels towards the end zone, dives towards the goal line, and gets in. Touchdown. Worthington Kilborn. They go right back down the field and score an impressive drive by the Wolves as rumbling in for the Ramos roofing touchdown. Tyler Bussard, get your free estimate on a roof by calling or texting 614-761. Roof, Tyler Bussard brings Kilborn to within a point, seven to six. A great job of dropping those shoulders down and keeping your head up. Fake the uh, quick shovel pass in the middle. Watch again, <laughs> making sure he gets in. No question about it. That was a good call by the officials and a great effort by that young man. And uh, how They're about trying to catch him napping on this and they almost turned the ball over on the extra point attempt. They tried to run a two-point try, and it fails, and Worthington Kilbourne will trail by a point after the touchdown run by Bussard. 2.02 to go in the first quarter. It is 7-6 in the Battle of Worthington. Thomas Worthington leads Worthington Kilbourne. Our Toyota Friday Night Rivals game continues. Yeah, yeah, they ran that offset eight thing and then tried to throw. Back to receive for the Cardinals, number three, Colin Squeeze, number five, Tyler Bear. Kicking off for really the Gilmore, number eight, Gavin Scott. Coming up at halftime, it's the greatest show of athleticism you never knew you needed to see. It's the Safe Light Auto Glass Mascot Challenge, involving beloved furry friends vying for the title of Mascot Champion. And that comes up at the half here tonight at Thomas Worthington High School, where the Cardinals have a one-point lead on Worthington Kilbourne. Our scoring summary brought to you by Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health Board of Franklin County. Six plays, 41 yards. Four minutes and 50 seconds set up by the interception by Connor Lacey of Worthington Kilbourne. And first score of the year for mm -hmm. Worthington Kilbourne, 21-0 a week ago. And uh, 
put themselves in a good position because of the interception. They got the first turnover of the game and turned it into points. Racing up the field, the kick is Benner. He has done the majority of that work tonight for Thomas Williams and a good return out across the 30-yard line near the 35 where he is brought down. They tried to get a little cute on the extra point attempt at Kilbourne, and it came up short. Yeah, watch, this is where they spread everybody out. It's a play that, quite frankly, I have laughed at. I've never tried it. I've never seen it. I can't believe you waste practice time on this stuff. And obviously, they didn't practice it enough. <laughs> It looks like the throw. <laughs> it actually bounced it, yeah, off, bounced off of, of one of the linemen for Kilbourne. Yeah. 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 Well, they planned it. They wanted to use it. I uh, got a bulletin for you. Flush that one. We won't do it again. Now let's see if the uh, freshman quarter uh, quarterback can bounce back after the interception. Off to a good start, save for the pick. He's seven of eight. This is Bowers with the carry. A flag is down. Bowers to the edge and is knocked out of bounds near the 45-yard line. Line of scrimmage was the 37. And this penalty flag sponsored by the U.S. Army. Holding. Offense. So that will push the Thomas Worthington offense back. You know, you look at Greg Keegley, the quarterback's numbers a week ago in that uh, game against Beechcroft, 9 out of 23 for 191 yards, or excuse me, 109 yards, one touchdown, but two interceptions, Marty, in that game. And again, you know, this is a young man that is seeing the game operate at a highly different level than it was in eighth grade. Uh, so this, this is the evolution of a kid that I think is going to be extraordinarily talented over time. Jeff, you hear this term used a lot as Kilbourne gets ready to snap on first and 20. The game has to slow down a little bit. Maybe take us through that. What exactly does that mean? Well, it's just a matter of getting comfortable with, you know, sometimes it's the speed of the players. I mean, eighth grade versus uh, young men that are shaving already. I mean, there's a big difference between varsity football and eighth grade. But slowing down, meaning that you can sit back there and not think, just react. Kingley will keep the football for the first time tonight. He's trying to angle to the near side, but great penetration that time by Worthington Kilbourne as middle linebacker Tyler Bussard, who had the touchdown run a moment ago, getting the job done on the other side of the ball defensively with a nice tackle as the play loses back to the 25, a loss of a couple. Two-yard loss for Kegley. Second down, 22 yards to go. 6'1", 185-pound freshman. One of the things that Mike Paquetti said really – made him stand out in the preseason was he, he never panicked. He never wavered. He didn't look like a freshman when he got behind center. Here's a pitch and catch, and Javon Lamb trying to wiggle his way free. Gets past the 30-yard line and track down shy of the 35. A, a rarity. We talked about it earlier for a freshman to come to grips with that because, let's face it, you hit it a moment ago, Jeff. This time last year, he was quarterbacking the eighth-grade team. Yeah, this is amazing, you know, to be able to play at this level. Uh, how about Javon Lamb here, the junior uh, receiver? There is nothing there, and this is all his athleticism here taking over got a few blockers downfield last week he had three catches average 13 yards a, a, a catch but this is a dynamic receiver getting the ball out in the open and he can make people miss lamb will be off to the left of the quarterback as the first quarter clock starts to wind its way down we're at the 32nd mark of quarter number one each team has scored a touchdown the difference right now, the missed extra point by Worthington Kilbourne. Cardinals lead the Wolves 7 6. Keegley with all kinds of time in the pocket, looking long down the far side and overthrows Llewellyn, who had got behind the defensive back in Kilbourne, uh, Kilbourne territory. So the incompletion will bring up a fourth down now for. Thomas Worthington. No need to wait to get the score of your favorite high school team. First scores on Fox 28 are sponsored by Columbus State Community College. They have you completely covered tonight starting at 10 o'clock. First scores on Fox 28. Well, the receiver was open there. Any question about arm strength, no, Marty? No, none. He, he, can, he, can, he can spin it. There is no question about it, but just a little bit out of the reach. Looks like uh, Kilborn is coming after the punter here. 15 seconds left in the quarter. And Thomas Worthington with the lead, 7-6. to six. And Kilbourne will call the timeout with 15 seconds left. Not sure they had the, enough players on the field for the, uh, for the punt return. 
this rivalry is one that has seen ebbs and flows, but especially of late, you could, I guess in a lot of respects, Jeff Logan call this a streak of streaks as you look at the way this thing has played itself out over the years between these two programs. Thomas Worthington has had the upper hand of late, but then just prior to them taking charge of this rivalry, they had a long streak where they didn't have a lot of success. Look at that. Uh, winners of four of the last five. That's where they really found themselves. But that was a nasty decade, nine out of ten, reminiscent of the <clears throat> John Cooper years. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I wondered if that was going to come up. One of the uh, things about that streak, especially when Kilbourne had charge, was the way that Kilbourne won those games. They basically ran away and hid in most of them, 40 or more points, one, two, three, four, five, six times in that streak. And that uh, right there is the very definition of domination in a streak. But things have turned around a little bit. And don't think that Michael Edwards and the folks at Worthington Kilbourne are well aware of that. Fourth down upcoming. Low snap, bounces back to the punter, LaProd, and he gets off a poor kick. Did the best he could, really, in the situation with the snap bouncing back to him, and the punt will be fielded after a moment's hesitation as a hat comes flying off after the short return for Worthington Kilbourne. Picking up that ball was Austin Todd, 5'4", 154-pound. <laughs> Austin says, if you're going to leave that egg on the field, I'm going to pick it up and run with it. <laughs> Looks like there's a flag down. It may end up being a face mask, the way that helmet came off. Let's look Personal foul. Face mask. 15. Kicking team. That's going to create excellent field position again. This is the third drive for the Kilbourne Wolves tonight. The first one, a quick three and out. The second one was the interception where they got the ball and started that drive at about the 35-yard line on the side of the Cardinals. This one is going to stop or start on the short side of the field again, probably down around the 40-yard line of the Cardinals. And that play, the flag on the play, sponsored by the U.S. Army. Austin Todd will stay in the game as it was a dead ball foul, the face mask. So the ball moved to the 40-yard line of Thomas Worthington. So with two seconds left in the first quarter, Kilbourne will have a chance to run a play here to end the quarter. It's a touch pass. And finding a little running room and being brought down after the short game was Jack Steele, and that will do it for quarter Number one here at Thomas Worthington High School. Each team gets on the board in the first quarter, but a missed extra point. The difference right now, our Toyota Friday night rivals, Thomas Worthington leads Worthington Kilbourne seven to six after 12 minutes. Touchdown Club of Thomas Worthington High School. I'd also like to thank our meal sponsors for the past two weeks Abel Roofing, Buca de Beppo, and Jersey Mike's. Once again, Abel Roofing, Buca de Beppo, and Jersey Mike's meal sponsors for the past two weeks on behalf of the Thomas Worthington Cardinal football team. Toyota Friday Night Rivals. We're at Thomas Worthington along with Jeff Logan. I'm Marty Bannister. 7-6. Thomas Worthington leads Worthington Kilbourne. 7-6 as we get ready for quarter number two tonight. Another hot, steamy night across central Ohio. Andrew Buck Michael had your forecast prior to the game tonight and once again hitting it right on the head. Sun starting to set off to the 
West as we play high school football week number two. First play from scrimmage, a handoff inside. This is Bussard running through a tackle attempt for Kilborn. Line of scrimmage to the 32-yard line. Picks up six yards. It'll bring up a third down and short call upcoming for Worthington Kilborn. Marty, so far that offensive line doing a pretty good job of neutralizing Francis Brew, that nose guard, number 55. Let's continue to watch that battle. Third down and three. Francis Brew, a force in the middle of that defensive line and almost on cue. He comes up with the tackle right there. <laughs> That's what I get for challenging the young man, right? 6'2", <laughs> 275-pound senior who's only got 26 Division I offers. But right now, a lot of the bigger Division I schools in the Big Ten are the ones that are starting to show interest in the young man. He has already verbaled to the University of Pittsburgh. But that's all that it is right now is a verbal. There is a flag down. See what the flag is. And again, sponsored by the U.S. Army. Our referee tonight is Terry Williams. There is no foul for illegal formation. Fourth down. Good job by the officials correcting themselves, picking it up. Let's move along. Big third down here, bro, uh, Marty. But I, I put you in four down territory, right? Absolutely. Ball at the 32 of Thomas Worthington. We're in the second quarter of a one-point game. I like the way Terry Williams is so very deliberate with his calls. Very calm, very, very calm demeanor when he tells you what's happened on the play. Jen Angeli rolling to throw and just overthrows Kieran Morley, who was open in the flat at the 29-yard line. That would have been good enough for a first down. Now Cameron Jen Angeli is going to want that one over again because he did have separation out in the flat, had his receiver very much available. Kieran Morley right there giving him a big target. Again, he got uh, just his second start for uh, Cameron Jen Angeli. So, yeah, been around the program for a while, but uh, brand new at that starting quarterback. You see the officials are having a conversation. The yard marker has it as fourth down, the digital yard marker far side, whereas the scoreboard has it now first down. So the officials have come together to sort this out. They were trying to get this situated out since there was a penalty. No. And no penalty and no play, so we're getting this all organized right now. And Terry Williams will tell us, or will he? Let's see. This play was an error. It was marked as fourth. It was third. This will be fourth down. So now it is fourth down. So the yard marker across the way, the digital yard marker was right. The so scoreboard was incorrect. It is fourth yep. down. And I can see where the confusion came from. Everyone else is trying to get it all sorted out as well, too. Mike Paquetti yeah, is not asking. in total agreement. He said, we were looking at the scoreboard, and it was fourth down. You see Coach Paquetti at the bottom of your screen there on the right. Not a heated conversation, but a informational conversation down there to make sure that it is being called. What the officials do um, is they keep, uh, like, rubber bands and things on their, on their fingers and they keep track of what the downs are that way. They usually do a pretty good job. They don't usually make any mistakes down there when it's down in distance. And again, another conversation by the gentleman wearing striped shirts. And I'm sure they're going back and going back and rehashing each one of the plays in this drive to make sure they get it right. while they're going through that conversation. Congratulations to Thomas Worthington High School on opening up a new facility here, uh, brand new, where they've got all of their locker room and team facilities. Uh, it was one of the last things to be built here. Um, across the way, you'll see it from some of, there's the view right there of that brand new building. They've got a team room up there to the top right. They've got locker room facilities in the fall for four separate teams, two for ladies, two for men. And then it will obviously switch over in the spring uh, to different sports, but a fabulous facility for them. And if you look across the way, across the field there, you'll see a new practice field uh, that is there for Thomas Worthington. It will open next week. It is ready to go. They've been practicing in the dirt and the grass and the mud. And there you see that new field. All those white bags over there 
are the little pellets that they put down into the AstroTurf, the, the uh, artificial surface, and as soon as they get all those little pellets down out of those bags, they'll be ready to go, and they've got a brand new facility that'll be used by all of their sports teams for practice and preparation. Rather lengthy discussion going on here. Our stats tonight are provided by Jason Van Hoos, and uh, I, I tend to agree with Jason. I think that last play was fourth down, so this should be first down now for by the count we have. So this should be Thomas Worthington football. But again, the discussion going on right now. Well, if they want, we've got all the replay up here of every play. <laughs> we can run happened. back every play for you. <laughs> we can run it for you guys if you want to look at it. 45 seconds into quarter number two as we're trying to get all this sorted out. This all centering on a little confusion between third and fourth down with Worthington Kilborn and a penalty that was. And again, we're still trying to get all this sorted out. Right now, it's fourth down. Third member of our broadcast crew tonight. Let's check in on the sidelines with Kelly Ann Stitz. Hey, guys, before kickoff, Thomas Worthington in both schools, they honored former Buckeye and former Cardinal great Demetrius Stanley, who, who ended up passing away from a long battle with prostate cancer. And in honor of his life and legacy, they will be wearing a DS decal on their helmet all season long. Coach McKinney said this was very important. The two were very close, and he said that anytime he needed any advice, Stanley would help, including when the Cardinals were facing the then top seed in Central Ohio, Upper Arlington, in the playoffs. Piketty was in his second season at Thomas Worthington. It was a big game, and Stanley came and talked to the team beforehand. They will be wearing these decals all season long in honor of his life and legacy. Piketty said that he was a cornerstone in this community. Guys. Kelly, a nice job on that story. And not only was Demetrius Stanley a great football player, but a, a great person as well, too. And that's one of the things that the folks here at Thomas Worthington are certainly recognizing. And again. Well, they, they, they are, have yet to make a decision. The teams are huddling up. And the officials are huddling up again. <laughs> now they're going to want to get the clock right. They're going to want to get the down and distance right. But it may very well be that fourth down, and, and Thomas may end up with the football. But I can tell you this, the offense is not getting ready to take the field for the Cardinals. Again, 7-6 to six is the lead for Thomas Worthington. Coming up in just a few minutes, we will go down to Kellyanne Stitz for the music go-around coach's corner to hear from the coach that is leading as his team heads to the locker room for his thoughts on the first half. And perhaps we might even get an explanation as to what just happened here, whether or not it was third or fourth down. Again, that comes your way at the intermission, brought to you by Music Go Round. All the fans here on the Thomas Worthington side holding up five fingers. It is <laughs> fifth down and three. I, I, I agree with Jason Van, who's our stat guy. I, I think this is wrong, but nonetheless, we're playing. And a quick handoff inside. And regardless, they're going to get the football, are the Cardinals, as Bussard was knocked down before he got to the line of scrimmage. So after all of that, the Cardinals will get the football. Well, that's the way to take care of it, right? Exactly. No harm, no foul, just a few seconds off the clock, 11 minutes, 11 seconds remaining, and the Wolves will turn it over on downs. What's that old line, never leave it up to a committee? Boy, isn't that the truth. <laughs> so the Thomas Worthington offense will come onto the field, first time in quarter number two with the football, and a one-point lead in this. Intradistrict rivalry here in Worthington. One of the things that both head coaches talked about leading up to this game was certainly in this game as the handoff goes inside to Isaiah Bowers and the pile will just push him out across the 35 yard line was this is a described as a very healthy rivalry between these two programs yes you want to win on a Friday night when they face one another but after this it becomes we want Kilborn to do well Jeff we want Thomas Worthington to do well they'd like both teams to finish nine and one Right. <laughs> exactly. This being the one. <laughs> and this being the one that they this try and the win. One, right. Yeah, this is the one. Gain of four out to the 37-yard line. Shade starting to cover most of the field here. Keegley back to throw. Sets up strong in a pocket again and leads his receiver too much near side. That was Llewellyn on the near side in front of his bench. That was a timing pattern where you're running what we'll call a dig route where the receiver's going to run a certain number of steps downfield, certain number of yards, plant that foot, come back to the football, and the quarterback is actually throwing the ball well in advance of him making the cut. And again, these are ones that you're going to learn over time, and only experience is going to get that timing to be perfect. Third down and six for the Cardinals, who on their opening drive were very impressive and right down the field, nine plays. 
punched the football in on an impressive opening drive. And right now hold that lead of 7-6. Keegley again back to throw again with a lot of time in the pocket and the pass intended for Perini far side, led him a little too much again. That offensive line up front, Jeff talked about a moment ago for Thomas Worthington. Four starters return up front. They've got a pretty good one at that right tackle spot. 6'3", 305-pound sophomore Marvin Phillips, who has no varsity experience, but they like that young man a lot across the front. So that's one of the reasons why Keegley has a lot of time to throw the football. Receiver open on the play, Marty, as you called, and that's a matter of quarterback just getting his feet set and delivering the ball on target. Austin Todd standing back at his 25 to return the punt of LaProd. Much better kick this time by LaProd, and it will take a Wobbly bounce and roll to a halt at the 33-yard line. Kilbourne gets the ball when we come back. 10-16 to go. Quarter number two, 7-6. Thomas Worthington leads Kilbourne in our Toyota Friday Night Rivals game. Toyota's national sales event is on. Make the most of summer with a new Toyota. We want the great Tacoma. Great Tacoma coming in hot. On it. Highlander Hybrid. Highlander Hybrid on the double hang. Here we go. That Red Rav 4. Run a Red Rav 4. Hit the deck. Now that's how you holler. Make some legendary memories in the powerful and efficient new Sequoia or the biggest, most capable Tundra ever with the best resale value, plus two years no-cost maintenance. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. Kilborn with the football as flags come in. Tyler Bussard trying to get to the outside, but first we'll see what the flag is on the play. And once again, sponsored by the United States Army. Looks like five yards going against Kilborn. Dead ball. Nice. Ball start. Off number six. A little movement in that offensive line prior to the uh, snap. Jeff, I asked Kilborn coach Michael Edwards earlier in the week about his football team. And, yes, he was disappointed in last week, but it wasn't that crushing disappointment. He saw what he kept referring to as light at the end of the tunnel, knowing the future to him looks very bright for his program. Well, he feels very good about his team for the future and, like anything else, trying to rebuild it the way that he wants to, moving in the right direction. First and 15 after the walk-off, and Janangeli to throw far side. The pass is caught and weaving his way up across the 35-yard line. Jack Steele with the catch, and Steele brought down across the 35 out of the 36. Pick up a nine yards for Jack Steele. Good job of getting the ball out quick here, and you got blockers downfield with the receivers doing a nice job, and you get that penalty on first down. You can't get it all back at once necessarily. You bring yourself up now second and seven. This is a good down and distance for this football team. Single coverage, top of the field. Let's see if they try and get the ball out there. Good look at Jen Angeli, the six-foot junior. 12 of 25 last week for a buck 56. And was picked off a couple of times, and he'll throw again. Flares it near side. Oh, a dangerous pass, and what a job defensively by Caden Spalding coming up from the corner spot to elevate the intended receiver right off of his feet as the ball got there. A great play. Yeah, he brings the heat here, and he's not a big guy, only 5'10", 170 pounds, but comes out here fundamentally, this is as good as it gets. Not a cheap shot. This is solid. This is exactly how you play that corner position. Come up and make him remember that hit for the rest of the evening. 5'10", 170 pound senior. Three tackles last week for Caden Spalding, and that was a dandy right there. Third and six upcoming now for Kilbourne. Last week in the Watkins Memorial game, they were one for 12. Rolling as Jen Anson. That pass almost picked off, and that might have been a pick six right there. As getting out there in a hurry defensively was Alaric Lynch, 5'10", senior. Alaric Lynch, he, uh, Lynch rather, he had that one in his sights. He was thinking six before he held on to the pass, Jeff. You know, it's funny, kind of knocked the ball down, and I think the ball surprised him a little bit. <laughs> that would have been a spectacular pick six for the young linebacker. But a great play nonetheless. Alaric Lynch, 5'9", 170-pound senior. He had two interceptions last week in the game against Beechcroft. Fourth and six, and Kilbourne will punt the football away. And again, flags come in as the ball is snapped.
Dead ball. Crutchman on the defense. Five yard penalty. And it's still fourth down. I don't know if this will change anything. I was just going to ask you if, yeah. Do, but if you've got a little trickery up your sleeve, they already tried it on a two point conversion. This might not be a bad idea to snap it to the up man and see if you could catch the Cardinals napping. It's fourth down and one. And they will go ahead and kick the football away. The punt by Gavin Scott. Very high, very good kick. That will bounce at the seven yard line and take an immediate right turn when it hit the turf. And Thomas Worthington will have the football deep inside their own territory. Back down to the sidelines again in Kellyanne Stitz. Hey guys, these two coaches. Mike Bacchetti and Kilbourne's head coach Mike Edwards grew up in towns that bordered each other. Bacchetti from Bridgeport, Edwards from Martins Ferry. Edwards grew up playing in the second most played rivalry in Ohio against Bel Air. And while the two never played each other against against each other, says the two grew up on De Carlos Pizza. They were raised in coal mines, still tough. Nine yard line, first down and ten yards to go. Value a good, healthy rivalry. That rivalry between those two schools on the eastern part of the state of Ohio. That's a area of a hotbed for high school football at Ohio Valley Athletic Conference area. Martins Ferry, Bridgeport, Bel Air. That was the, the Bel Air Martins Ferry game is the one that Michael Edwards talked about right away. Because I asked him about rivalries because he coached at Pickering to North for a number of years. He knows about the rivalry with Pick Central. Flair to the near side, and this is Javon Lamb trying to get to the corners. Another flag comes sailing in. But I asked him about being involved in that North Central rivalry. He goes, hey, wait a minute. I was in the Martins Ferry Bel Air rivalry. So I know all about that. Yeah, there is no doubt that is a heated rivalry down there. See what the, the uh, call is by the officials here. Holding, offense number five. That's getting one of those receivers downfield, trying to contain and hold on to that block as long as you possibly can, but obviously got a handful of jersey. A little surprised, Marty, at this stage Holding that the running back Jordan. in this offense, Isaiah Bowers, has basically disappeared you know, from the play calling. They're throwing the ball a lot, and I thought they did a really good job of being able to the run the football the early in the game. I see Bauer standing on the Cardinals sideline. Helmet on, Check looks like he's physically fine. First, down and 14 for the first and long up coming after the penalty walk off. First and 14 inside. This is Lamb dancing, darting, accelerating, and getting out of, across the 10 yard line. Picks up seven out to the 12. Javon Lamb is a guy that, had, as I mentioned, had seven carries a week ago, three receptions coming out of the backfield. And also, you know, Isaiah Bowers does play a little bit of defense as well, Marty, so the ability to maybe give him some rest here is what they're trying to do. Well, Mike McKetty talked about as they face a second down and seven. He, I asked him if he's happy with his numbers as far as player numbers, and he said well, we're getting there. They have the largest freshman class they've had at uh, Thomas Worthington in 20 years, but he said some redistrict, redistricting really hurt their numbers. Here's Keegley to throw. Oh, what a catch. As coming away with the football was Dominic Perini out across the 40-yard line. Another flag is down. What a throw. What a catch by Perini. Right now it stands as a first down for Thomas Worthington. Boy, there's some magic between those two young men being able to connect. What a really good throw there by quarterback Gray Keegley on target and on time. Here's the call down on the field. Pass interference. Defense number 17. Penalties the clock. Watch this throw by the freshman Keegley. Boy, really good. Watch him sets his feet, throws that ball with confidence, and there you can see the hands on the receiver during that play, and that's where the interference comes in. But what a nice connection there and first down play. Looks like they get about two or three yards. Isaiah Bowers back into the game, and he gets the touch. Out across the 45-yard line. That's another Bowling Green State first down. Bowling Green State University. Great to have them as part of our broadcast this year and sponsoring. First down calls in this game. 7-6 the lead for Thomas Worthington as we play here 
at Hamilton Field at Thomas Worthington High School. Seven and a half to go here in quarter number two. Back to throw again is Keegley. Looks to the near side now. This is a wide open receiver. Luella makes the catch at the 25-yard line, and it's out of bounds with another first down. Brought to you by Bowling Green State University for Thomas Worthington. The offense again getting it done through the air. Yeah, Luella, a six-foot-one receiver, is a great target. And again, this is a pass that obviously Greg Keegley likes to throw the fade ball. Throw it up there, go to a point, let your receiver go up and high point the football. And Llewellyn does a really good job of looking that in. Two receptions a week ago, averaged 13 yards for last week. Here's Bowers running out of a tackle attempt and flipped down as he had started to build up ahead of steam. And he gets inside the 20 yard line to the 15, picked up seven yards on that play. Well, you get a look at Isaiah Bowers, and this is a guy that is just built solid from the waist down. Look at him pummeling those legs, keep moving in the right direction. I wouldn't call it a man crush, but I can tell you what, this young kid is really special. Jack Steele with the stop for Worthington Kilbourne. As we go under seven minutes to go, quarter number two in our first half here of our Toyota Friday Night Rivals matchup. Keegley hands off Bowers, and a lot of guys wearing white jerseys and white helmets right there to greet the running back, Isaiah Bowers. A little more about what Mike Piketty was talking about, about the numbers, and he says one thing you have to keep in mind is this program is making strides, and we talked about their dominance in the series of late with Worthington Kilbourne, but let's be honest, this is a program that is, it's been a while since they've had a consistent run of success, Jeff. Yeah, there's not been a lot of respect for this program, maybe, you know, a decade previous to this one, and Thomas Worthington certainly moving in the right direction, no question about it. Third down and two, but prior to the <laughs> ball being snapped. Excuse me. Time out. Time out called by Thomas Worthington with 5.55 to go here in this first half. Mike McKinney has the look of a coach who was a little upset with the play not getting in quick enough. And again, 7-6 is the lead for Thomas Worthington. And we were talking about Greg Keegley a little bit in terms of what he brings to the table. I can tell you the story that, you know, back a year ago when this kid was still going into the eighth grade, he showed up at the varsity summer practices. He's throwing with the varsity football team, and he hasn't yet played his eighth grade year. Pretty special kid. Absolutely. We invite you to stick around at the half for the Bath Fitter Halftime Show. Discover the inspiring reason that teachers from West, uh, from these two schools are helping students as the school year begins in the Ohio Education Association Educator Spotlight. We'll, we'll have scores from around Central Ohio as well, too. Brought to you by Kitchen Saver. It's all coming up at the half. And again, 7-6 is the lead for Thomas Worthington. Javon Lamb in now at the running back spot. And they like to throw the ball to him out of the backfield. Quick hitter on the inside. It should be good enough for another Bowling Green State University first down, and it is. A good use of managing the clock, managing uh, the football, taking care of it. Looks like we've got a timeout situation again. We've got an injured player down on the field for the Worthington Kilbourne Wolves. 5.42 to go first half with a timeout on the field. We'll step aside as well. Thomas Worthington leads Worthington Kilbourne 7-6. to six. Our Toyota Friday night rivals game continues. First down goal to go for Thomas Worthington at the Worthington Gilmore 10 yard line.
Thomas Worthington trying to extend this one-point lead. 5.42 to go here in this first half tonight. Cardinals with one timeout remaining. Two timeouts for the Wolves and substitution. Lamb back in at the running back spot off to the right of the quarterback, Keegley. Turns and looks for the play being sent in. Reset the play clock. Looks like they're going to reset the play clock, absolutely. Cardinals last season were six and five. They were two and three in the OCC. Cardinal got into the playoffs as the eighth seed in their region and lost to the ninth seed, Hilliard Bradley. Keegley throwing for Llewellyn in the back corner of the end zone. He tried to make a one-handed grab of that ball, but could not hang on to it. Again, they love throwing that fade pattern to the receivers. And it seems to be a favorite throw of Greg Keegley. Pretty accurate so far, Marty, from what I've seen on that throw. You know, you've got a little bit of a condensed field down here because of the end zone. There's Keegley so far. 10 out of 15 throwing the ball for 139 yards. The one pick, which turned into six points for the Wolves. Again, good protection into the end zone. Touchdown. Again, through an absolute dart, Aiden Llewellyn just walked into the end zone, turned around, and the ball hit him right between the one and the zero for a touchdown. This has become a favorite throw in, in football right now where you're running a, to a direct point. This quarterback is throwing the ball directly to the cone right there at the goal line. He doesn't care where the receiver's going to be. They are on the target. That ball is loose before they actually turn and look for the ball. One, two, three, get rid of it. On target, on time, touchdown. That's another Ramos roofing touchdown. Get your free estimate on a roof by calling or texting 614-761-ROOF. Touchdown pass by Gray Keegley and the extra point attempt extends the lead for Thomas Worthington to 14 to six over Worthington Kilborn. Boy, the freshman, we've mentioned it a couple of times, but just really not playing anything like a freshman right now. Are the fans loving this? There's a student section here at, for the Cardinals. I can tell you what, you look across the way, the Kilbourne fans have come out in droves as well. Everybody, what did you call this? Wotown something or other? Showdown. Showdown of Wotown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I well, love you it. were close. I you were, love you it. were close. The Wotown <laughs> Showdown. I like it. There you go. Now you got it. <laughs> One of those where if it's not printed out in front of you, it gets to be a little tough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, number 88. This rivalry, one that. Certainly is intense, but as we talked about, a healthy rivalry as well. Brought to you by 80 AMH. Eight plays, 67 yards, our scoring summary. Three minutes and 38 seconds. Another impressive drive by the Thomas Worthington offense, and they lead 14 to 6. Scoring summary again by brought to you by Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health Board of Franklin County. You know, good throws, obviously, in that drive by Keegley, but the running again of Isaiah Bowers, I thought very important to be able to keep that drive alive. Kick will be fielded in the end zone and brought out by Carson oh. Taylor and a couple of pretty good sticks. Uh, out across the 21-yard line is Carson Taylor. He took a lick there, but he held on to the football. Special teams is for special people. You've got to have uh, some toughness and grit and you're willing to go out there and prove that uh, you want to become part of this football team. Thomas Worthington next week will be on the road. They'll go to Grove City, a Grove City team, which last week put 59 on the board in beating Dublin Sciota. Grove City quarterback Matthew Pappas last week threw four touchdown passes and threw for 357 yards in that one. Worthington Kilborn next week will have the Groveport Madison Cruisers in. High snap, get Angeli hands off, and not much running room. Line of scrimmage to 23, and Tyler Bussard might have got back to the line of scrimmage, and he did just that to the 23. Jeff. Look at big number 55 in there, Brew making the play. Watch Francis Brew, left side of your screen, gets off the block, and he's able to make the play. That was 55 going up against 55. Hizu Eltum had the responsibility of blocking the big guy, and the 55 
in the red was the winner. Jeff, you talked about Mike Paquetti and his praise for Francis Brew as Jen Angeli throws to the far side. Jack Steele trying to weave his way through defenders and chasing the play down over there again was Francis Brew. We see it there. We saw it on the play a moment ago. That quick first step, which what Mike Paquetti says, sets him apart from everybody else. Well, think about this. There they go with a quick pass out into the flat, and you got the nose guard out in the flat making the play. Watch this. 55 gets on his horse. Here he comes right into the play there. That's the middle guard coming out there, guys, making a play in the flat. That's why Pitt is so excited about his verbal commitment and why everybody else is trying to get him to change it. Third down and seven upcoming for Kilbourne. All he does is bench 385 pounds and squats over 600 pounds if you're keeping track of yeah, such things. Reminds me of you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Back to throw is Jen Angeli and a completion for a first down out across the Across the 35, 35 yard line. Yard line. First down brought to you by Bowling Green First State Bank out to the 36, uh, by Bowling Green State University, rather. A first down for Worthington Kilbourne. It, 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 when you think about a program like Pitt, they've had a history of some great defenders. I mean, the one name that jumps to the forefront right away is Hugh Green. You have to go back a few days for that. But nonetheless, they have been producing a lot of talent that has gone on to play in the National Football League across that front line. Trying to angle to the near side is Will Evans. And Evans is brought down at the 41 to pick up a five. Evans, a 5'11", 205-pound junior. It's funny when you look at it, Jeff, schools that are known for producing players at certain positions, everybody thinks you know, these days uh, Ohio State is wide receiver U, and rightfully so, defensive line as well, too. The linebacker U was always Penn State. They've got some specialties, and uh, I would say right now it's hard to argue with Ohio State as wide receiver U with what they've done in terms of getting guys to the league and what Brian Hartline has done in terms of the recruiting and development. Inside, this is Evans with the carry. Nice spin move. And is able to pirouette and get the first down out of the midfield stripe where he is shoved back. Nice running by the junior, Will Evans. Evans carries the ball from the 41 up to the Picked up nine on that carry. Eight yard gain. First down for Williamson Kilborn. Let's make it midfield. Again, no rush. They've got uh, 250 remaining here in the second quarter. Two timeouts remaining for the Wolves. That Kilbourne offensive line, Ben Culver, Hiziel Toom, Graham Brown, Brandon Reyes Campos, and Johan Mendoza across the front. Good size, all in that 6'4", 240, 250 range. Steele comes in motion. He'll hand it off inside to Evans. And gets right back to the line of scrimmage and no further as the Cardinals defense able again to stack up in the middle. Francis Brew in there along with Nick Zalewski. Now all that attention goes to a guy like Francis Brew where he gets a lot of double teams and that's going to free up opportunities for Nick Zalewski. And here's a kid that's 6'5", 210, just a sophomore. They really like the upside of that young man. Whereas number 19, even though he's playing on the defensive line position. Francis Brew will get a moment breather on the sideline. Zalewski, a two-way star for this Worthington Cardinal team, also flips over to the offensive side of things and lines up a tight end for Mike McKetty's offense. Two minutes to go in the half. Back to throw now is Jen Angeli. Flushed out of the pocket, trying to step up, trying to evade people. Nice little spin move, gets him free to the near side. Still rolling sets and heaves it long downfield. This one's up in the air, a jump ball. Oh, what a catch. And the ball pops free at the last moment. Oh. But there's going to be an interference call. There was contact made down there as the defender was trying to adjust. It looked like Joseph Brew, number four, the sophomore corner, may have been guilty of pass interference. That ball fluttered on Jen Angeli as it went downfield. This flag brought to you by the United States Army. Pass interference. Offensive pass interference. Oh, they, they signaled offensive pass interference. You mean the judge here. What well, do you think? It, it, that would be pushing off, basically. Again, quarterback running for his life. Jen Angeli sets his feet, throws the ball. See if they get separation now. Yeah. They pushed off. Jacob Granick. If you extend those hands like that, the official does have the ability to call that offensive pass interference. And that's a huge call that goes against the Wolves. Intended receiver, the junior, Jacob Granick. And that little extra shove right there at the end of the play was all that the back judge needed to see. 
Third and long, third and 25. The ball moved back to their own 35. Ken Angeli will throw far side. And making the catch out to the 45 is Kieran Morley, and he is shouldered down at the 45. Looked like a mistake in coverage out there. Nobody covering the short throw out into the flat, giving plenty of room for the receiver to be able to manage carrying the ball forward, but it's going to bring up third down in about 16. Jeff, I asked both coaches this week, you hear the old term, teams make their biggest improvements from week one to week two in a season, and I think both teams right now probably fall into that category. Yeah, I think they could look back at their games a week ago and say that we've done a whole lot of things better tonight uh, than we did in week number one. One minute to go in the half. Jen Angeli again is back to throw, trying to find some room in the pocket, and he's on the move, being chased, and gets shoved out of bounds to the far side. Noah Walters over there to escort him out of bounds, far side. Bring up a fourth down, and Kilborn will get the ball to start the second half, and you can see the conversation with the coach on the sideline. Probably wanted him to throw the ball downfield as opposed to stepping out of bounds there, but nothing available. So a fourth down and nine upcoming for the Wolves of Kilborn. And Gavin Scott, who does all of the kicking duties, punting and place kicking. On to punt this one away. Last week he had a half dozen kicks for a 27-yard average. His long was 41. Worthington Kilborn falling to a pretty good Watkins Memorial team last week, being shut out 21-0, but it was just 7-0 at the half in that game last week. Delay game, and a delay of game against Kilborn. And that's really not a, a devastating penalty by any stretch of the imagination. No, they wanted to run the clock, keep mm -hmm. it going, move it in that direction. 58 seconds remaining, only they've made a correction on the scoreboard, now giving two timeouts to the Cardinals. It had been one for quite some time. Scott with a good kick. Line of scrimmage is owned 46. And Tyler Benner sliding to his knees to field the kick. Goes down to his knees at the 18-yard line. A 36-yard punt with the return by Benner sliding down to the turf. And we'll see what the mindset of Mike Pichetti and his offensive coordinator, Mike Owens, is with 51 seconds left in the half of a game that they lead by the score of 14-6. I think you make no mistakes down here. Don't throw the ball away. Don't throw an interception here. A steady diet of Isaiah Bowers in the backfield or Javon Lamb, and it looks like Lamb is in the game right now. Thomas Worthington trying for their third win in a row in this series and their fifth in the last six tries with their cross-district rivals. Here's a little hesitation by Lamb, and now the acceleration to the near side. Has the corner to the 30, to the 35, to the 40, and what a run by Lamb as he sprints to the near side and gallops for a first down. Brought to you by Bowling Green State University. Out across the 40-yard line to the... See where he stepped out of bounds as will put him out of bounds at the 41-yard line, so it ends up being a 23-yard first down gallop. Nice tackle or nice uh, block on the corner by that tight end Nick Zalewski that we just talked about a little bit ago on the defensive side. Number 19, the 6'5 sophomore playing that tight end position, blocking on the corner. First down and 10 with 42 seconds left in the half. This is Lamb trying to get to the far side this time. And again, that little pause and then the movement across the 45. If they, in fact, have two timeouts, now it's been corrected back to one. If they only have one timeout remaining, this would be a good time to maybe consider taking it. And they do. With 32 seconds left in the half. Scores in this game as we reach the... Remaining seconds of half number one. Isaiah Bowers with a one-yard touchdown run for Thomas Worthington. Tyler Bussard, an 11-yard scoring scamper for the Wolves of worthington Kilborn. However, the extra point attempt was no good. And then Greg Keekley, a 10-yard touchdown pass to Aiden Llewellyn to make it 14-6 in favor of Thomas Worthington. You like that Wotown showdown thing. I really you? do, man. I, you know, I thought maybe this was something that you came up with 
3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm not nearly that creative, all right? <laughs> but, but, but apparently somebody more creative than us <laughs> thought about this for Worthington. But it's a nice fit, though. Makes I a lot like of it. sense. I've never heard of Worthington, though, referred to as Wotown. Kelly Ann was all over it, too, before the game. She was really excited about using that during – her hits on the si sideline this afternoon. In fact, I think she might even have uh, got one of those Wotown showdown tattoos. Here's a pass to the far side. Dominique Perini with the catch and stepping out of bounds. Far right, side. Kelly Ann, did you get a tattoo? But I don't even know the tattoo option, but I I'm down. <laughs> we're, we need a, can we get matching one? Because we're, we're a team here. Yeah, well, the tattoo. You have to get one. The tattoos they're doing go right on your forehead. Oh, great. So we, <laughs> listen. <laughs> We're a team, but not that much of a team, Kellyanne, okay? So we're, we're not going that deep into this. <laughs> First down upcoming. And again, stay with us for our halftime show. Watch to tell you about it. The intermission scores as well, too. Here's a little flare to the near side. Lamb makes the catch and tries to wiggle out of one tackle attempt, but won't get out of another as he has wrestled down as coming up to make the hit was Amore Jordan, a 6'4", 190-pound junior at that weak safety spot. That was a good tackle right there as he wrestled Lamb to the ground. Another timeout being called by Thomas. Also in on that tackle, 15, Amore Jordan for Warrington Kilborn. Amore Jordan is another one of those guys in that Kilborn backfield that Michael Edwards talked about in the week leading up to the game. He and Ty Crump, the boundary corner, he calls him a lockdown corner. We haven't seen much of him in this one yet make a play in that regard, but those are a couple of pretty good guys to build on from a defensive standpoint for Worthington to Kilborn. Second down and 13 for the Cardinals from the Kilborn 47. Ball at the 47 of Kilborn with 17 seconds left in the first half. Scoreboard still showing two timeouts remaining for the Cardinals. Unless you get like nine if you're the home team, I don't think that's correct. <laughs> just just for the record, Marty. <laughs> Only nine? <laughs> Only nine? <laughs> I don't think that's correct. Play clock will be reset. All right, again, they love throwing the fade pattern. This gives you a great opportunity for this Young kid with the big arm to throw that ball deep. And he will come to the near side. And this is Llewellyn, who's been his favorite target of the night, making the catch and then stepping out of bounds after making the grab, stopping the clock with 13 seconds left. Number 10, Aiden Llewellyn, receiving that ball for the Cardinals. He's pushed out of bounds. Ball is now spotted to the 37-yard line. That's got to feel like stealing going over there when you got a 5'5 <laughs> corner covering you. Llewellyn, a 6-1 target. Back to throw is Keegley again, and that was another good throw right at the waist of Llewellyn again to the near side. You know, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, Marty, but these are direct, immediate throws to a target. Not even really looking at where the receiver is, go is, is running the route, but where he is going to be. And again, this is just timing of practice and practice and practice and the confidence that these two men have in each other. Nine seconds remaining. Max Laprade is their place kicker. The ball's at the 27. They probably need another 10 yards, perhaps, to give him a decent crack with nine seconds left. See what the mindset is here of if you're going to throw Mike that Vigetti. fade, if yeah. you throw that fade. You've got a a big mismatch here at the bottom of your screen, and there goes a flag coming in. Delay of game, Thomas that will probably take them out of even if they were in field goal range at this point. I'm thinking he wants more room in the end zone. What do you, what do is you that think? What you think it is? Okay. I, I don't know. All right. I mean, why intentionally take a delay of game there unless you were trying to create? So with nine seconds left in the half. Snap bounces back to Keegley, and the freshman with a heads-up play right there just covered the football. And that will do it for the first half here at Thomas Worthington. We have played through two quarters here at Thomas Worthington, and the Cardinals go down the field on their initial possession and add another score late in the half. Worthington Kilborn got on the board as well, set up by an interception. And at the break, 14-6 is the lead. Thomas Worthington on top of their cross-district rivals from Worthington-Kilborn to the sideline now and Kellyanne Stitz. 
Coach Paquetti, aside from that interception, Greg Keekly not playing like a freshman out there in this big rivalry game. How would you assess his first half performance? You know, I thought he, he adjusted well, came out a little nerves, but uh, I thought he had a good half. Um, we just got to correct some small stuff. He's making some stupid mistakes, but we'll be, we'll be ready to roll. At the 11 minute mark in the second quarter, there was a bit of confusion whether it was third or fourth down. What was the explanation given to you? Uh, we we kind of knew it was fourth down, but it is what it is. You know, sometimes mistakes happen. We'll get it corrected, and it won't happen again. So, what is what do you want to see from your guys in the second half to keep this momentum rolling? You know, I think we just need to we need to make sure we're getting the mental mistakes out. We're, we still have a very young team. Um, we still got to make sure we're we're staying focused. They're still a dangerous team. They can hit one big. So we got to make sure we're, we're we're on the ball and getting done what we need to get done. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you, guys. Again, 14-6 is the score. Thomas Worthington with the lead as this game has reached the intermission against their cross-district rivals from Worthington Kilbourne. The defense stepping up big in the first half for the Cardinals. 14-6, our Toyota Friday night rivals matchup. <laughs> Score first from Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. From the music department. In Saber, we gotta make our money. Show. I'm Killian Stitz. Right now, Thomas Worthington leads. Worthington Kilborn 14 to 6. And every week, the CW Columbus and the Ohio Education Association are highlighting the real MVPs in tonight's game. The educators who are making a difference inside of their classrooms at Worthington Kilborn and Thomas Worthington High Schools. Here's tonight's edition of our Educator Spotlight. 
The Ohio Education Association and the CW Columbus are putting the spotlight on these exceptional teachers here in Columbus. Celebrating STEM, pre-engineering and video production teacher Vanessa O'Leary from Thomas Worthington and English teacher Yo Smith from Worthington Kilbourne. Vanessa single-handedly brought back the communications technology class and now helps students produce a weekly news show called Squawk Talk. She keeps her students on a strict schedule to meet important deadlines and helps them inspire creativity. Recently, because of this revival of our program, uh, we've received many accolades as far as um, our show, Squawk Talk. Yo encourages her students to read and write at a higher level through her classes. She has also been inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2022 for going above and beyond in her classroom. I say often, if you just put me in the classroom with my kids, I'm happiest. Congratulations to these outstanding educators and all the hard work they do for the future of Ohio. Thank you, Vanessa and Yo, for all that you guys do for your students. Now it's time to turn our attention to an exciting one-of-a-kind competition that you'll only see right here on the CW Columbus, the Mascot Challenge. Let's see what's in store for us this week in the Safe Flight Mascot Challenge. Check it out. Welcome, everyone, to the Safe Flight Mascot Challenge right here on the CW Columbus. All right, then, let's meet the contestants. Jaguar, Bear, Cardinal, Dog, and Good Day Columbus's own Muggsy. This week's challenge, the big race. Oh, ho, 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 ho. the combatants are loosening up. They're at the starting line. And they're off. Bear seems to be a bit in hibernation. Cardinal's using some dirty bird tricks. The fans are on their feet. Jaguar seems a bit sluggish. What's going on? Oh boy, it's still anyone's race. Dog, looking to make a late push. And you can never count out this feisty orange mug. It's going to be a photo finish. The fans are looking on in anticipation of a winner. It's Dog! It's Dog by a toenail. Congratulations, Dog, on winning the big race. Tune in next week for another exciting Safe Like Mascot Challenge on the CW Columbus. No mascots were harmed in the making of this video. Congratulations, dog. That was quite the entertaining race. Now, coming up after the break, Marty Bannister will share scores from across our area. And right now, Thomas Worthington leaves Kilbourne 14 to 6. You've been watching the Kitchen Saver halftime show right here on the CW Columbus. Rock and Roll Part 2 is a classic tune heard across the country on Football Friday Nights. You know it as the Hey Cheer.
The Wilmington Fairborn Marching Band is under the direction of Alex Brunk and Jane Di Francesco. The band starts there. Welcome back to the Kitchen Saver Halftime Report. Thomas Worthington leading Worthington Kilbourne 14 to 6. It's our Toyota Friday Night Rivals matchup here on what has turned into a splendid Friday night for high school football here at Thomas Worthington and all across central Ohio, our Toyota Friday Night Rivals. Tim Kilborn, your Toyota Friday Night Rivals matchup.
Ohio Education Association is proud to recognize Central Ohio Scholar Athletes of the Week. Lauren Beyer is a field hockey state champion at Thomas Worthington High School. She has the second all-time record for the most goals in a season, as well as best offensive player. Lauren carries a 4.3 GPA. She's on the Student Athlete Leadership Board and also the Senior Class President. Lauren is a member of the National Honor Society and involved with the Cards for Kids Club. Graham Brown is a three-sport athlete at Worthington Kilbourn High School. He's a two-year starter at center for the football offensive line. Graham serves as the swim team's captain and also competes in track. He serves as the student body vice president and is a WKHS news anchor reporter. Graham has a 4.3 GPA and is a member of the National Honor Society. Congratulations to these outstanding Ohio Education Association Scholar Athletes. And welcome back to the half. 14-6, Thomas Worthington with the lead over district rival Worthington Kilbourne. It's our Toyota Friday Night Rivals matchup. Along with Jeff Logan, Marty Banners with you. An exciting first half. A lot went on. Both teams showing some flashes on defense and offense early on as Thomas Worthington, Jeff, went right down the field and scored. Yeah, they really did. And, you know, we knew this was going to be the rivalry game that they had talked about. The emotions are running high in with us when we come back we'll get you to the second half thomas worthington leading worthington kilbourne 14 to 6. it's our toyota friday night rivals matchup on the cw columbus your speech to the guys at halftime? we got to win the line of scrimmage. I think the team that wins the line of scrimmage at the end of the night is going to win this football game. Offensively, don't make those little mistakes. Drive killers, get behind the chains. Defensively, stop the big play. What does your defense need to do to help slow down Greg Keegley in that offense? Keep doing what they're doing, but make the play when the ball's in the air. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you. Guys.
Yeah. As we come back from the break, we wanted to give you a look at the Worthington Kilbourne Marching Band. The sneak peek is sponsored by Music Go Round Marching Band Sound. Check out any of their locations, 2630 Bethel Road and in Gehanna inside the Stone Ridge Plaza. The Worthington Kilbourne Marching Band. Very much appreciated by these fans of both sets of stands and the football team. Also, we'd like to recognize our halftime sponsor this evening, Elite Home Remodeling. We'd like to thank you. Elite for their sponsorship the halftime 14-6 to Thomas Worthington over Worthington Kilbourne. Kelly Ann Steads with Michael Edwards. Coach Edwards, what was your speech to the guys at halftime? we got to win the line of scrimmage. I think the team that wins the line of scrimmage at the end of the night is going to win this football game. Offensively, don't make those little mistakes. Drive killers, get behind the chains. Defensively, stop the big play. What does your defense need to do to help slow down Greg Keegley in that offense? Keep doing what they're doing, but make the play when the ball's in the air. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you. Guys. Kellyanne, thank you. And that was part of his message to his team this week during practice, Jeff. Just simply come out and make plays. That will get you back in the football game. Even though they only had just a little over 100 yards of total offense in the first half, if they make plays, this is the game they can win. Yeah, the coach's job is to get you in position to be able to make plays. Make sure you get lined up right. Make sure you're in the right defense. But they rely on you to use your athleticism to go out there and separate yourself uh, or separate that receiver from the ball. We get ready for the second half kickoff, and it is sponsored by MakeItMakeSense.org. Scan the QR code on the screen to get youths and adults the help they need to quit smoking and vaping. Kickoff fielded by Worthington Kilbourne, and the return by Carson Taylor gets out across the 30-yard line, out near the 32-yard line. They're sorting through the 50-50 monies here at the intermission. Jeff is intently watching all of the money being tossed around to his right down there. I get 20%. <laughs> Is that what it is, 20%? Just, just for reviewing what's going on. I'd here. ask for a little more than 20%, Jeff. First down and 10 upcoming for Worthington Kilbourne, the Wolves, members of the Ohio Capital Conference's Capital Division. They are a Division II school, Region 7. Last year, the Wolves went 4-7, and seven, went 3-4 and four in the OCC Capital. They were the 14th seed in their region and lost to the number three seed, Westerville South. They had to play them in back-to-back -back weeks, closed out the regular season with the Wildcats, and then were dusted by them in round one of the playoffs, 34-7. First play of the second half for the Wolves, who, again, trail by just eight. Handoff inside, and not much running room. Guess who? Francis Burroughs. There's number 55. Double nickels making the stop. That was Tyler Bussard with the carry. Again, this guy is a beast. He got, you can't block him with one. They're trying with two. And still, they're able to make the play. Good assist in there also from middle linebacker Noah Walters, 6'2", 200-pound senior. Ninth carry of the game for Tyler Bussard for just 38 yards. Francis Brew made that a no game. Second down upcoming. Snap goes through the hands of... Jen Angeli, and that was a problem they had last week on an offense where they, on offensive series rather, they moved into the red zone against Watkins Memorial, and a similar play like that ended up throwing everything all out of whack for them offensively, and they were unable to get any points on the Once board. Once again, that ball was just a little bit high, but it looked like the quarterback, Cameron Jen Angeli, uh, Lee, took his eye off the ball just for a moment there. 
number one thing you got to do is secure that football if you're that quarterback. And you can see Michael Edwards on the side. Talk to Kellyanne Stitz about no more mistakes. Mistake number one here in the second half. Third and 18 after the botched snap. And Jen Angeli is back to throw, steps up into the pocket, now puts the football in his waist, and there he goes with a good run out across the 35. Tries to reverse his field, out of a tackle attempt. He may get the first down. He does have it to the 40, to the midfield stripe, and steps out of down. That's a Central Ohio Toyota dealer's first down, and that was all athletic ability right there by Cameron Jen Angeli. Yeah, that's the way to do it. After you have that little error on the play before, come back and show that you're a leader on this football team, make something out of nothing and the junior quarterback takes off, and he's running for his life at this point <laughs> and really does a nice job of breaking a tackle there. Didn't have the first down until he broke that tackle, and the drive is alive for the Wolves. Jen Angeli with the big run there. The first down carry out to the 49-yard line. Picked up 26 on a third and 18. They hand it off to Bussard trying to get to the far side of the field and that offensive line for Kilbourne starting to do a little bit of its own assertiveness in this second half. They, in the first half, got pushed around a little bit up front. We talked about the play of Francis Brew across the front for Thomas Worthington, but there is some decent size on that Kilbourne line and Hizzy El Toom, the six foot, 250 pound senior right guard, kind of taking charge up there on that play. Yeah, and if they're going to double team, that's going to be the center, Graham Brown, along with that right guard, Hizzy El Toom, as you mentioned, and then also on the left side, Brandon Race Campos has the responsibility of neutralizing number 55. Ball at the 44-yard line, and again, and you see they're running to the right side majority offensively here, Jeff. And again, those guys we were talking about, El Toom on the right side, 6'4", 285-pound junior Ben Culver also clearing some space on that right side. And that's another Central Ohio Toyota dealer's first down for Worthington Kilbourne. Well, Coach Edwards talked about you got to control that line of scrimmage, and right now, if you're looking at the beginning of this third quarter, the white jerseys are controlling that line of scrimmage. Ball at the Thomas Worthington 35-yard line. We are two and a half minutes into half number two. Great to have you with us here on our Toyota Friday Night Rivals game. Marty Bannister, Jeff Logan, Kelly Ann Stitz, Jason Van, who's handling our stats tonight. A little flare to the near side, and this is Kieran Morley, who's been a favorite target tonight of Cameron Genangeli. And Morley picks up another first down as he got across the 25 to the 22, a pickup of the Baker's Dozen. And that's a Central Ohio Toyota dealer's first down, Jeff Logan. We've seen both of these teams take advantage of throwing the ball out into the flat and getting some blocking downfield. And this is really a nice effort of getting yards after the catch, the yak yardage, Y-A-C, yards after catch. Dussard offset to the left of the quarterback. And again, he rumbles to the right side, and Francis Brew is able to grab him around the waist and hang on and slow down his progress before help arrives. Play picked up five to the 17-yard line. Kilbourne, of course, back in the 90s, this was a powerhouse program more than to Kilbourne. Jeff Gafford, when the school opened, took over the job. And for years, they were making playoff runs when you're getting to the regional final in Division II. Now, they were regional champs in mm -hmm. 1999 and 2004. Last time they won an OCC championship, though, 2013. Vince Trombend, he spent a number of years as the head coach of the Kilbourne program. Again, here's Bussard trying to get to the outside, and again, good penetration as he is chased to that far side. Elliot Kemp, strong safety, a 5'9", 150-pound senior, was over there to slow him down enough, Jeff, to allow help to arrive. You've talked about Vince Trombetti. Guess who I saw on the field before the start of the game? Vince Trombetti. He's on the coaching staff, <laughs> right. and I asked him, what year is this? <laughs> year number 40. How good is oh my that? My goodness. The guy loves the game of football, loves teaching young men. What a great guy, too, and a terrific Coach, Coach man. Trombetti, absolutely. Third down and three after the game for Kilborn trying to keep this drive alive. Handoff, it's a fake. It's the quarterback, Jen Angeli, and he plows ahead to the 10 to the 9, gains a half dozen, and that's another Central Ohio Toyota dealer's first down on this impressive drive by Worthington Kilborn here in the second half. And they're going to mark the football just inside the 10 yard line, so first and goal. We talked about the importance of the first drive of the second half. Which team is going to exert its dominance? And right now, Kilborn is the team that has come out because of one long broken play by that young man right there, Cameron Genangela, who kept the drive alive. And coming after a play that was 
falling into a broken play category with that snap that went over his head. Short gain here as the handoff goes to Will Evans trying to get to the outside. In fact, he will lose a yard back to the 10. So it'll be a second and goal from the 10 for Worthington Kilbourne. Good run by, or good run stop by Noah Walters right there, number 56, the middle linebacker. One of the seniors over there on the defensive team. Got a good set of linebackers over there. Kilbourne will flank two wides to the far side for the junior quarterback, Cameron Genangeli. Oh, hand it off inside. This is Bussard just lowering his shoulder and powering into the middle of the field. And gets back to the six, perhaps to the five-yard line. We'll see where they put his knee down. Tyler Bussard, 5'11", 200-pound senior. Last week had 13 carries for Michael Edwards' offense. Picked up just 28 yards. But Coach Edwards, very high on his game. Likes the way Bussard handles the football and carries and runs it and a guy who they have no problem handing the football to. Three defensive fresh bodies check in for the Cardinals, trying to give them the short yardage push that they've got here, and certainly which they would expect this to be four down territory. Third and goal with the six. Good look at the junior quarterback, Jen Angeli. And flags come in as he spun to roll to the far side. See what this penalty flag is sponsored by the U.S. Army. False start. Offense number three. Looked like they had somebody in the backfield moving before the ball was snapped. Now, again, you don't want mistakes. You don't want penalties down here in the red zone. Uh, that's not what part of the plan is. But it does give you a little bit more room in the end zone to operate. Now it becomes a passing down instead of a 50-50 run pass like they had before at the five or six yard line. Ball's back at the 11 where it is now third and goal at the 11. We are just a little over halfway through quarter number three. He started off to the left of the quarterback, Jen Angeli. And he will look to throw this way and threw it in between about three different guys wearing white shirts. Ben Davis was one of the targets in the area. And the ball split the difference and falls incomplete. Not to bring up fourth down. And we'll see what the mindset is of Michael Edwards and his coaching staff here. Yeah, Kilborn was trying to flood the zone with three receivers. And you can see the right-handed quarterback going to his left makes it a very difficult throw. The hard part about that, Marty, as you can imagine, that right-handed quarterback getting himself out, he's got to square his shoulders up and be able to deliver that ball with some emphasis. And it looks like they're going to attempt a field goal. This will be Gavin Scott to try the field goal. Clock's running down, play clock to seven. They will probably have to burn a timeout here with 5.43 to go here in this third quarter. Now, we're gonna have to reset the play clock as well. So that helps Kilborn now if they can put that timeout back in their hip pocket. So Gavin Scott will come on and try the field goal attempt. He did not have an attempt last week against Watkins Memorial. This will be from the far side hash. Ball spotted at the 17. This will be a 27-yard attempt to bring Kilborn to within five. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up, and it has the distance, and it is good. The 27-yard field goal by Gavin Scott, and it's 14-9, Thomas Worthington with 5.42 to go here in quarter number three. The Wolves of Kilbourne inch closer in this showdown in Wotown. It is 14-9, Thomas Worthington on our Friday Night Rivals game. Summer won't last forever, but during Toyota's national sales event, you can make memories that will. Come on. There you go. Whoa. <laughs> Where's my mom? Just be in the moment. <laughs> Make some memories in a stylish new Corolla, versatile Corolla Cross, or electrified Corolla Hybrid, and get APR financing as low as 3.99%, plus two years no cost maintenance. Toyota, let's go places. Michael Edwards team to within five, the 27 yard field goal by Gavin Scott. Impressive drive by Worthington Kilbourne Jeff. It didn't end up in six, but nonetheless, they get points out of it. No, you gotta come away with something. Obviously getting the ball down inside the five yard line and then having the, the motion mistake really is something you don't want. Here's the scoring summary brought to you by the alcohol, drug and mental health uh, from Franklin County. 12 plays, 56 yards, six minutes and 12 seconds. 
Kick fielded by Western or by uh, Thomas Worthington's Bre uh, Benner, and he carries out across the 25-yard line. He has been doing the majority of the return work tonight for the Cardinals and gets out across the 25 to the 28-yard line, and that's where Thomas Worthington will scrimmage. Well, six and a half minutes used on that clock on that very first drive for the Kilbourne Wolves, and Thomas Worthington would like to return the favor. They'd like to be able to maintain this football, take it down the field slowly. Again, we've got a freshman quarterback, 14-year-old Greg Keegley. Had a pretty good start in the first half. Some impressive numbers in the first half. We talked about his touchdown and his interception. We showed those two at the half. He was 15 of 20 throwing the football in the first half. Impressive numbers for the young man. Last week, 9 of 23 for just 109 yards. And they win over Beechcroft. One touchdown, two picks in that game. Hand off to Lamb, trying to find the edge and does. 35-40, and is brought down out across the 45-yard line. That's a Central Ohio Toyota dealer's first down for the Thomas Worthington Cardinals offense. Yeah, Javon Lamb does a great job of making people miss. This play designed to go up inside. Nothing there. He's able to bounce it outside. And that's one thing that Worthington Kilborn cannot afford to do is give up the edge. And that time, Javon Lamb was able to turn the corner. This is developing into a pretty good one-two punch for Thomas Worthington. We talked about Isaiah Bowers, but you bring Lamb in, and that's a very potent combination for Mike Paquetti's offense. And it's Lamb again coming to the near side, has the corner, little high-step move right there, and then is wrapped up around the shoulder pads and thrown down just across the midfield stripe. Coming up to make the tackle for... Kilborn that time was Amari Jordan lost his hat, so he'll have to set out a play here. Yeah, we've seen a lot of that through the first couple of games of the it season. Seems it's like, yeah, haven't we? I don't know if it's just the sweaty heads because of the heat and those, and those lids are flying off like crazy, but we've had a bunch. There's Javon Lamb's numbers for tonight. Pretty impressive Five yards attempts, per carry over average. Ten yeah. yards a carry, pretty impressive for sure. Four and a half to go as the clock spins here in this third quarter. Tight one tonight here at Thomas Worthington. The Cardinals lead the Wolves 14-9. This is Lamb after the stutter step. Now the hesitation and now the acceleration gets him out across the 40 to the 39-yard line. Again, doing a good job of selling that, trying to go up inside to see if there's anything there, and then able to do the jump cut bounce to get himself outside. Very effective running. you got to make sure as a running back, though, you don't try and leave... The, the, the telephone booth too early, all right? Uh, you got to make sure that they are condensing into the middle before you bounce it outside. That's another Central Ohio Toyota dealer's first down, a gain of 12. Does anybody know what a telephone booth is now? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Boy, that does show my age, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? Here's Kingley back to throw near side. Oh, that pass is knocked away. And in fact, he caught it, but Llewellyn was out of bounds. That ball almost knocked away. Coming over there, flashing a hand up in front of that ball. Good coverage for the Kilbourne defense that time. That was Braden Pullins who got over there. And Almost deflected the pass out of bounds. It still goes as an incompletion, however. Well, Braden Poland's doing a pretty good job on Lou Wellen that time, and that's where they've had difficulty, and that's where Coach uh, was talking about Mike Edwards about when the ball is in the air, go make the play. And that time they were able to make that play. I'll tell you, I can't remember the last time I saw a phone booth. <laughs> That's why I like working with you. It's a historical visit every night. Here's a handoff to Lamb. Short game to the 38-yard line. Kelly Ann Stitz is with us on the sideline tonight. Hey, guys, this big rivalry game pulling in a lot of former alumni for Thomas Worthington, including their former quarterback, Will Cooper. He says that he mentored Greg Keegley. He's here on the sidelines. He actually plays for Tiffin now. He mentored Greg Keegley and put, took him underneath his wing for the past three years, and he's happy to see him doing his thing tonight. He said last year in this game he was nervous, but Greg texted him last night and said, hey, I'm ready to prove myself. Of course, this freshman answering the bell in this big rivalry game, guys. He certainly has his numbers very impressive with a touchdown pass. Back to throw. Near side, Llewellyn with the catch and steps inside the 30-yard line to the 28. Central Ohio Toyota dealers, well, close to a first down. It is a first down. They now move the markers as Aiden Llewellyn with the catch. And again, another good throw by Keegley. Yeah, into coverage, too. And they've, again, they've got uh, pretty decent coverage, but that ball is thrown on time and on target, and Llewellyn turning into the favored receiver tonight. 
five catches for nearly 100 yards. You can see he has the touchdown. Good night there for that young man. This is Lamb again with the little jump cut move, as Jeff Logan described a short time ago, but he's brought down after a loss of a yard on that play. Coming up was Lucius Luft, a 5'9", 185-pound junior defensive lineman to make the stop. Yeah, this is where he just kind of gave up on it too early. The play's got to go up inside. Sometimes it's just not going to be there. Take the two or three tough yards, get your pads low, keep your heads up, and drive forward. Play will lose a yard back to the 30. We roll towards the two-minute mark. Lamb again stops, cuts, reverses, moves, fires ahead, spins ahead, and a lot of work right there for a gain of about six for Javon Lamb, 5'8", 170-pound junior. He's fired up. He wants the ball. You get in a rhythm out there, and you just want to continue to get the football. Again, that offensive line for the Cardinals doing a really good job of dominating things up front. Logan Gardner, the number 69, the center. Liam Farley at left guard. Josh Innes, the right guard. On third down and five, Keegley will throw. Now flushed out of the pocket, comes to the near side, and the throw is low as he tried to find Benner to the near side. Jeff was talking about that offensive line. Ennis at right guard is a three-year starter. Gardner at center is a three-year starter. Liam Farley at the left guard spot, a returning starter. And Andrew Shiflett, the left tackle, is a two-year letter winner and a returning starter. And they love Marvin Phillips at that right tackle spot, a 6'3", 305-pound sophomore. And that throw just a bit low intended for... Tyler Benner. You know, not a bad throw when you're being flushed out of the pocket if you're going to get rid of the ball. We've got a long field goal from the 32. It'll be a 42-yard attempt. And that one is good without any effort whatsoever. Tyler Benner's low miss of the catch attempt leads to this 42-yard field goal by Max LaPride, who's a member of the Thomas Worthington golf team. They only have him at practice two days a week. It's a good thing he does show up. He drills that one, 17-9. Thomas Worthington with the lead over Worthington Kilbourne, our Toyota Friday Night Rivals. Gotcha. Kicking off for Thomas Williams and number 16, Maddox LaPrad. D4 Williams, the number 16, Austin no need to wait to get the score of your favorite high school team. First score is on Fox 28, sponsored by Columbus State Community College and has you completely covered tonight, starting at 10 o'clock. Isn't there a song, The Moon Over Wotown? Isn't there some song out there, the, the, the Setting Moon Over Wotown? I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> you didn't see the moon there? I mean, the beautiful <laughs> shot of the moon. Well, the moon was great. Yeah, the moon was great. I don't know where that moon well, the over moon Wotown over, thing the moon comes over from. moon over Wotown. Okay, it's, it's, all right, okay. Right? It's the, all, right. all right. I'll follow along. You lead, I'll follow along. Right. Maybe I was thinking of Motown. Oh, yeah, you probably were. Here's the kick. It will say out of the back of the end zone. <laughs> What the heck happened to kicking in high school football where all of a sudden guys are making 42 yarders like it's a chip <laughs> shot? He didn't yell four, though. 11 plays, 42 yards, four minutes and nine seconds brought to you by alcohol, drug, uh, mental health of Franklin County, ADAMH. 11 plays, 42 yards, four minutes and nine seconds. Yeah, he's an interesting story. He kicked the game-winning field goal last week against Beechcroft. And Coach Mike Piketty says that he's, as I said, a member of the golf team. He doesn't practice on Mondays or Wednesdays. And he's with the golf team on those days. No, I asked Coach Piketty about him. I said, is he a soccer player? Because normally these yeah. days, place kickers are members of the soccer team. He said, no, it's a unique combination. He's a member of the golf team. That looked like one of your drives there. It just sailed high and straight down the middle. Toss to the far side. Jack Steele trying to get around the corner to the edge to the far side. 
Have you ever hit a drive that straight? Um, not quite that straight or okay. not that hard. That All was right. pretty impressive. <laughs> not at that age, I can promise you that. <laughs> There's the brain trust across the way for the Wolves. Still a one-score game, down 17 to nine with 117 to go here in this third quarter. That last play lost four back to the 16. And Angeli will roll on the little play fake. Being chased by Zalewski. Still on the roll and will fire ahead. And the pass is incomplete. Out of bounds in front of the Kilbourne bench on the far side. Good coverage over there by Colin Scalise. 5'7", 145-pound senior free safety. Yeah, there was just nothing there for quarterback Cameron Jen Angeli to be able to get rid of the football and flushed out immediately. Offensive line not doing a very good job of protecting the quarterback there on that rollout. They're trying to roll the pocket again to protect that quarterback, but that time pressure right away. And suddenly it's a third down and 14 call up coming for this Kilbourne offense when they took the field needing a drive here towards the end of the quarter. They suddenly find themselves in a third down and long. Get Angeli again, who was able to convert on a third and long a few minutes ago, loses the football. It's on the field, and it belongs to the Cardinals as Noah Walters comes in and scoops up the loose football, and Thomas Worthington in business deep in Kilbourne territory. Now, yeah, first turnover of the night for the Wolves, and that time you saw just a hand come in there and knock it out. You've got to secure the football when you're going to take off and run. Watch again here. There's the hit. Zalewski, the defensive end, defensive tackle, and tight end, able to knock that ball loose. And all of a sudden now, Thomas Worthington in control and in command. 62 seconds left in this third quarter, and they have the ball at the Kilbourne 16. Back moving ahead a yard to the 15 after the recovery. Bowers is back in the backfield. Keegley will throw into the end zone. Llewellyn, who's been his favorite target tonight, and that's why he goes up and takes the football away from two defenders for the 16-15-yard uh, touchdown pass for Thomas Worthington, and they extend the lead to 23-9. A Ramos roofing touchdown. Second. Call 761, Jeff. R-O-F. Yeah, second one of the evening. Talk about taking it to the roof. This is pretty special. You're not supposed to be 14 years old and throwing the football this perfectly. Holy cow, great job, great concentration by Llewellyn right in the corner of the end zone, and they have made. And some problems on the extra point attempt. The snap was low, but picking it up and trying to run in for the extra point and getting there for the conversion was Colin Scalise as the snap bounced back. Scalise picked it up and was able to spin the corner and roll in for the two-point conversion. And it's now 25 to nine. Everything rolling Thomas Worthington's way here late in this third quarter. Yeah, no flags on the play. And again, turning uh, something really bad into a two-point conversion. We've got an injured player on the field. Scalise able to run that ball right to the corner, get it ahead of the cone and get the extra two points. Watch again, you're gonna see this extra point from right at your face. And you can see the holder picks it up, heading for the corner, stretches ahead, able to get the ball across the plane. And there's the signal by the official and two points. He looked for a second, Jeff, as if he wanted to throw the football, had that little motion, that little hesitation, like he was looking for someone open in the end zone and decided, you know what, I'll just take it myself. And was able to step in just inside the pylon to the near side for the two point conversion. And Mike Pichetti's team has taken the lead to 25 to nine here this evening at Thomas Worthington High School where they have the advantage in this Wotown showdown. Next week, we will be at Dublin Jerome next week to watch the Celtics in a interesting matchup with Hilliard Davidson next week. Couple of Northwest side Columbus rivals going at it. Our Toyota Friday night rivals matchup. Hilliard Davidson, Dublin Jerome, Jeff and I and Kellyanne will join you next week at 7 o'clock for what should be an interesting matchup. Jerome's a very good football team. They've been impressive through week number one and tonight with a good size lead in their matchup. That should be a good one next week. And the rumor has it that uh, Hilliard Davidson may throw the ball one time in that game. <laughs> they, they, they don't like to throw it. I know that, even though Brian White's no longer there. 
One play, 16 yards. And again, the scoring summary brought to you by AD AMH of Franklin County. I remember talking to, to Coach White a number of times and some of his successors, members of that Hilliard Davidson staff. You ask him about throwing the football, and, and the reaction is almost as if they've taken a drink of sour milk I know. when they look at you. They, Throw it. They, it, it. Generally, they say, why? <laughs> and, and you can't answer that. I mean, and you can't argue with their success. Kick sails in, too, and will bounce out of the end zone. And Thomas Worthington's defense has a lead of 16 points as the Kilbourne offense will come onto the field under a minute to go here in this quarter. Well, you know something about not throwing the football, but you're playing days. You played for Woody Hayes, who well, felt the same way about throwing the football. What was that line? Three things can happen, and yeah, two of them are bad. And, and two of them are bad. Yeah. You know, so why even bring that into the equation? <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. We, we were the number one practice team in throwing the football. We right? threw it all day Is in practice. Right? All day we threw it. And knowing when we got wow. into the game, there was never a chance he was going to call those pass <laughs> plays. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> 10 of 16 tonight, 64 yards throwing the football for the Worthington Kilbourne junior quarterback making his second start, Cameron Genangeli. Francis Brew, who is, again, around the football as he has been most of the night on defense for Thomas Worthington. 43 seconds left here in this third quarter. 25 to 9, the lead for the Cardinals over the Wolves. You know, you hear about some of these kids that are four and five star football players, and you know, if you haven't seen them play as a former player, I want to come out here and just see are these guys the real deal? Can they go play at the Division I Power Five level? Some of the guys, you know, not so, not quite that that good. This guy is the real deal, no question about it. Kieran Morley with the catch, and then a whole lot of guys wearing red come racing in. You hear coaches say, "Break it down, break it down, gang tackle," and that was a pretty good description of that right there. As about six Cardinal defenders got to the ball carrier, Morley. And there's that Isaiah Bowers who uh, we saw in the first quarter of the game being the running attack for the Cardinals, and now. It's turned into Javon Lamb because 14 is playing a little bit more on defense. Thomas Worthington is a quarter away from winning its fifth game in the last six meetings with their cross-district rivals. From Worthington Kilbourne, we head to the fourth in our Toyota Friday Night Rivals matchup, 25-9. Thomas Worthington leads Worthington Kilbourne. Didn't win it? No. No. Thomas Worthington's high school marching band put on quite a show earlier tonight during the intermission. This look in on their performance is sponsored by Music Go Round Marching Band Sound. Check out any of their locations, 2630 Bethel Road and Gehanna inside the Stone Ridge Plaza, the Thomas Worthington High School Marching Band. Great performances by both bands tonight, and it's our pleasure to always show you those performances. 
We start the fourth quarter along with Jeff Logan and Kellyanne Stitz. I'm Marty Bannister. Worthington Kilborn trying to get back into its district rival matchup with Thomas Worthington, but down 25 to 9 as we start quarter number three. Uh, quarter number four. Quarter number three started to unravel a little bit on the Wolves late in the half. They had a turnover, which led to quick points for Thomas Worthington. And the Cardinals with the lead, Jeff Logan at 25 to 9. Yeah, and if you're going to get that turnover, you got to make sure you capitalize on it. And Thomas Worthington made it happen. Fourth down kicking situation. And it looks like Thomas Worthington will get the football again in excellent field position. Tyler Benner stands back at the 40 yard line to receive the punt of Gavin Scott. Racing up is Benner to make the catch. Steps into Kilbourne territory. And Worthington's, oh, Thomas Worthington's offense, rather, will start in plus territory at the 45 yard line of Worthington Kilbourne. We talked earlier about the rivalry between these two schools and how each coach has said, after tonight, we want the other one to go nine and one. And that's, I think, shows you the, again, the, the very accurate description of this as being a healthy rivalry. Both coaches said that. But at the same time, you, there is something special, Jeff, about winning a rivalry game and holding that over your opponent for another year. Absolutely. Um, Close-knit community. Um, all, you know, all like many of the, the communities in Central Ohio used to be one high school town. And then for years now they've had this split and they love going up against each other. There's Lamb spinning ahead as he tried to turn the corner to the far side. Yeah, it's funny, you look back over the years and when both these schools are members of the Ohio Capital Conference. When the OCC formed back in the late 60s, there were just eight schools in that league. There was just one Westerville. There was just one Worthington. There was just one Hilliard at that time. And Westland was Pleasant View at exactly. that time when the schools were exactly. when the league was formed. Mount Vernon was a member of the old OCC, Gahanna. But now eight schools is just a division in that league now. And they had telephone booths back then, too. <laughs> 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 After a two-yard gain, uh, it's second down and eight. <laughs> Keegley will hand off, and here is Lamb again, grabbed by the shirt and then brought down after the short game. Line of scrimmage was the 43. And he's able to step his way to the 41-yard line. But you think about it too, Jeff, and that just shows you the growth of Central Ohio. I mean, now there are four Olentangy High Schools. There, there are three Hilliards. There are three Westervilles. And you'd have to think, uh, with the Olentangy district, there are more schools to come. That's a, one of the fastest growing school districts in the state of Ohio right now. Now, the quality of uh, high school football in Central Ohio has changed dramatically in the last 25 years. No question about it. They'll be in no hurry to run plays here in this fourth quarter. Play clock's at four. And Mike Piketty gets it to one and then burns a Thomas Worthington timeout with 10-16 to go. We talked about the rivalry between these two. For Worthington Kilbourne, it's a unique situation because they not only have this game, but they also have the hard road rivalry matchup with Dublin Sciota. And both schools are located on opposite ends of hard road in northwest Columbus. But of late, much like this series, it has not gone Kilbourne's way. They have lost eight of the last nine, including seven in a row on that short trip over to Scioto or back to Kilbourne. And it is a short trip if you've ever made that. It, it, it's seven, ten minutes tops depending on traffic. But it is, a, again, one of the more intense rivalries in central Ohio. There's the excitement looking across the way. That's the Kilbourne side cheering on their football team, trailing 25 to nine in this game. But the juice is flowing over there. They're excited. In talking with Kilbourne coach Michael Edwards, I got the feeling it's a little different feel about the hard road rivalry than it is the Wotown showdown. Yeah, you know, each of them are special in their own way. Uh, but the one thing that is consistent is that Kilbourne has been short um, in those rivalries, as you've talked about, Marty, but so well uh, uh, shown in those uh, videos. Third down and six upcoming for Thomas Worthington, the freshman quarterback. Gray Keegley, who has been in charge of this offense night long, is back to throw. The rush is on, and he's flushed out of the pocket, and there he goes and fires ahead low. That one might have been picked off, and I think it was far side. It was picked off. Going low and intercepting that pass far side. Or was he out of bounds? Let's see. The throw was low over there on coverage. That was Braden Pullins, the 5'5 
junior defensive back. Have to see what the call is by the officials. Kegley flushed out of the pocket being chased. The throw was low and Pullins, yeah, he got that ball. That's yeah. an interception, yeah, absolutely. No Good job it. by Pullins, down to his knees. So a break for Worthington Kilborn was still time to go in this game. Just a little over 10 minutes and they're only down 25 to nine. So let's see if head coach Michael Edwards' offense can find some rhythm here in this fourth quarter. When Michael Edwards was talking with Kellyanne Stitz at the halftime coming out in the third quarter. He said, we gotta have guys make plays when the ball is in the air. And there's a perfect example of making a play. Pullins gives them a chance. Let's see if the Wolves offense can take advantage of it. They're at their own 39. Jen Angeli stepping up into the pocket and on the roll is tripped up at the last moment by Nick Zalewski, who just got enough of his legs to spin him off balance and knock him down at the 42, a gain of three. How about the upside of this young man, number 19, just a sophomore football player, 6'5", 210. We've talked about him on the offensive and the defensive side, and you can see him there just spying the quarterback, laying back until something happens. A lot of guys that uh, maybe don't have the experience or the athleticism would have just charged the quarterback. That time he laid in wait for that quarterback to make a move. Then Angeli steps up into the pocket. Now is rolling to the near side, being chased, and steps out of bounds to the near side over there. Shoving him out of bounds. Noah Walters has been very active from that middle linebacker spot tonight for the Thomas Warriors and Cardinals, the 6'2", 200-pound senior. Watch the ability to chase down the quarterback here by the middle linebacker. You know, you can say nobody open, he's got to scramble, but I'm telling you what, it is like a second or two before the pressure is coming up that middle from the defensive line. There's just not much of an opportunity for Cameron Jangela uh, Lee to be able to throw that football, and there's the mess in the middle, and that is with a compliment, and that is Francis Brew, who has been a mess for Kilborn. Third down and four. Jen Angeli again in trouble in the pocket, and he's going to run. Has the first down and falls into Thomas Worthington territory. That's another Bowling Green State University first down. As Jen Angeli able to use his, again, athletic ability to pick up the first down. He steps to the 49, and the Kilborn drive will stay alive. And Francis Brew again making a good job of watch the pressure right up the middle from 55. They're trying to double team him, but he flushes the quarterback using a back in the backfield. That time, Tyler Bussard was the second blocker on the nose guard. Francis Brew had a right hand full of Jen Angeli's jersey and pulled him down. A little bit of strength right there. Back to throw again to Jen Angeli. Again, we'll step up into the pocket. Here comes the protection breaking down, and there, that, and there goes Jen Angeli tumbling down. As again, Zalewski was in on the stop. Also coming up was Jacob Simono, defensive end, 5'10", 212-pound senior. Had four tackles last week, and again, good ability to chase down the quarterback again by that Thomas Worthington pair of defensive ends, Zalewski and Simona. It's a second down and nine call. Clock continuing to roll, 8.20 to go in the game. Flags come in. We'll see what the penalty flag is all about. Sponsored by the United States Army. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense number 60. I tell you, last week, I think we had, fair to say, 35 penalties in that game last week. You're being kind, but yes, <laughs> there were a lot. <laughs> and it was week one, and I get that. Yep. Tonight's been better. It has. It certainly has. Tonight has certainly been better. And I'm not even going to bring up the other issue that created problems last week. There was another issue? Yes. To the near side is Jen Angeli on the roll. will fire back across the middle. That's a dangerous throw, but it works out for him as the pass is caught in Cardinals territory at the 40. It's just a yard shy of the first down. Normally, when you throw back across the middle, Jeff, bad it's, things it's, tend to happen. It's dangerous. Yeah, that one thing that happened last week that we don't want to see anything of had to do with lack of hydration. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so we don't need to see any of that. We don't need to talk about it. Just lack of hydration. At the 40, play gained 13, so it is a third down and one. Crucial down here for Kilbourne if they want to stay in the game. Bussard gets the snap, and he will, with extra effort, get the first down. He was stymied in the backfield, but was able to wiggle out of the tackle attempt and was able to get away from Francis Brew just enough to get the first down at the 39. An interesting spot where they put the ball 
Marty, to see if they're going to go ahead oh, and give okay. him the first down or measure for this one. That was a bit overzealous in giving them the first down. Yeah, it looked to me like his looked to me like his forward progress was uh, was enough. But again, when the knee goes down, it's where that ball is in his arm. So 17 carries, 74 yards. He's been the workhorse tonight, obviously running the football and the touchdown in the first quarter, first half, excuse me. Well, Jeff, I would have to think, even if this is short, it's fourth down territory right now. You're down 16 points with seven and a quarter to go in the fourth quarter. Get a good look at it right there. Great job by our camera crew, as always tonight. Our production people doing a wonderful job tonight, and that is good enough for the first down. So the drive continues for Kilbourne. Kilbourne again will have Groveport next week while Thomas Worthington will travel down 270 to Grove City to face the Greyhounds. Jed Angeles back to throw, rushes on. He's flushed out of the pocket, hit as he throws, and this one is picked off, diving to the turf after coming away with the loose ball. That one floated into the air. Alaric Lynch, the 5'9", 170-pound senior, might have came away with your basic knockout punch right there, intercepting that pass. That was like fielding a, uh, a punt. You can see the blitz coming from the backside, forcing the ball to be thrown late. Marty, you talked about the ball coming out late across the uh, middle backwards there, uh, back across the grain. That is not a good recipe there. And Alaric Lynch comes up with a big play. And Jeff, that was set up by Noah Walters, who's been around the football all night long. He got his arm right on Jen Angeli as he went to throw the pass and forced the fluttering duck to be intercepted. Thomas Worthington now will try to basically run as much time off of this fourth period clock as they can with seven minutes left and coming up with the interception. They bring in Isaiah Bowers for this drive, at least for the time being. He is the power back at 220 pounds. Great night, though, by Javon Lamb. has been a, a, a really terrific job on the running side. Only 170 pounds. He's the, uh, the the guy that makes you miss, you know, that's able to make plays and, and a really good one-two punch for this football team. And, Jeff, this drive is, is very similar, if you'll play along with me, but different than the drive they had last week against Beechcroft where they had to drive down the field to win the game. This drive, they want to keep the ball and drive down the field, and they will win the game. Last week it was a drive they needed to win the game. Right now they're up 16 points. Did well, they any that makes sense to you. No, it does. It okay. makes a lot of sense. And what they don't want to do here is make a mistake and turn the ball over quickly, either on a three and out or on a fumble. I doubt they're going to put the ball in the air. And if they do, Greg Keegley is going to make sure that he only throws the ball where the red jerseys are going to be able to get to it. They'll hand it off inside and barreling out across the 35-yard line and shoved back was Isaiah Bowers. Doing a good job of taking care of the football because you know for sure Kilbourne is going to try and strip that ball. Again, look at the power of this young man just from the waist down. This is a solid young football player. Don't know what his plans are and what he would want to do, you know, beyond high school football or whether he wants to play at the next level. Uh, but the way he plays on defense and offense, you got to believe that Isaiah Bowers at some level, uh, should he want to continue this, could really be a good college football player. Well, I think a lot of things for – Mike McKetty and his coaching staff to build on. But I think one of the things that will stand out for them will be they found a pretty successful combination in Greg Keegley to Aiden Llewellyn. That's been one of the big parts of their offense tonight. Here's Bowers again, again, just dragging defenders with him as he tumbles ahead for a first down out to the 40-yard line. That's another Bowling Green State University first down for the Thomas Worthington offense. But that's a combination. Obviously, you need more receivers to get the ball, too. But I think Greg Keegley's found a go-to guy in Aiden Llewellyn. Well, I think, uh, you know, just being a 14-year-old freshman out there getting his second game of his high school career, I think this is a name, Marty, quite frankly, we're going to see around Central Ohio for some time to come. Jeff and I were down on the field prior to the game, and we were looking at our <laughs> spot charts, and we both looked at each other and went 6-1? Yeah. Sometimes they overstate it. This looked understated. <laughs> it did, didn't it? Here's Bowers. He has been impressive tonight and fights ahead for a couple of yards. And again, just simply pounding out yardage, rolling the clock. That's where Thomas Worthington is right now, leading 25 to nine. 
pretty good tackle by the Sam linebacker, Carson Taylor, the number 88, 6'1", 188, coming up there to make the play on that 220-pound running back. And pretty good execution. It's your head football coach, Mike Pichetti. Been an assistant at Bradley, Olin Tangi. Guys had some uh, great opportunities in Central Ohio. You look at what's ahead for the Cardinals after this one tonight. Handoff goes to Bowers. He comes to the near side, and he has the first down and more. The first down brought to you by Bowling Green State University, and it's a first down game for Thomas Worthington as Bowers rolls into Kilbourne territory at the 38. 424 to go in the game. Thomas Worthington leads Worthington Kilbourne 25 to 9. It's our Toyota Friday Night Rivals. Summer won't last forever, but during Toyota's national sales event, you can make memories that will. Come on. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Where's my mom? Just be in the moment. <laughs> Make some memories in a new best-selling RAV4 or electrified RAV4 hybrid and get APR financing as low as 3.99% plus two years no cost maintenance. Toyota, let's go places. Bowers with the first down. Carey gets shy of the 35-yard line. We were talking about what's ahead, Jeff, for Thomas Worthington right now, unless the feathers come off the Cardinals. They're going to win this game. They're up 25-9 to nine with 3.40 left to play in it. After this week, they go to Grove City next week, and, and Grove City was impressive last week in, in winning their opener. But then they have Newark and Westland back-to-back. This is a stretch of games coming up that Mike Piquetti and his football staff have to feel pretty good about going into this run. Some winnable games in Absolutely. that stretch. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and then they'll get into the meat. Of, of their conference, and they've got Jerome, Hilliard, Darby, uh, Marysville, Olin Tangi, and Berlin. <laughs> I mean, that is going to be a tough last five weeks of the season. Lamb stood up and able to fight for a yard or two. Ben Davis, the 6'3", 195-pound sophomore linebacker, one of the top defenders on this Kilborn team. You know, Marty, Marysville may be pretty good. I mean, they went to, uh, was it New Albany last week and smoked New Albany, who I think is supposed to be a pretty good football team. 25-9, Thomas Worthington over Kilbourne on Toyota Friday Night Rivals. <sighs> Who do you think, player? Would it be fair to go with Keegley? Jeff? We got what's Bowers? Yeah, let's go with Keegley. Keegley, yeah. Yeah. good call. As you prepare to leave tonight's game, ladies and gentlemen, please look around, pick up any trash that you have in your seating area, cups, bottles, food wrappers, and kindly deposit those items in one of the blue trash bins as you exit the stadium this evening. Thank you. Worthington Kilbourne has two timeouts remaining. Trying to stop the clock and doing so in hopes of getting the football back. A third down and seven with the Thomas Worthington lead to 25 to nine. Keegley will hand it off. Here's Bowers edging and gets to the corner to the 30 and is shoved out of bounds. And again, showing that little extra burst as he starts to turn the corner. Jeff Logan talked about it last week, getting those shoulders and hips square. And Bowers has been able to do that as soon as he gets to the edge, then he just moves up the sideline. Yeah, I think one of the things that Worthington Kilbourne from a defensive standpoint is going to need to work on is protecting the edge all night. They've been a little bit soft on the edge, and it's because they're really collapsing on those plays in the middle and not staying at home to protect the edge. The edge guy out there has to turn that play back inside, Marty, so that they can get the pursuit from the inside linebackers. The rivalry between these two, one of the things that Kilbourne head coach Michael Edwards talked about when he named his captains this season. He asked each of them a question, the guys that were the finalists for the captains, and he asked them, would you rather be 8-2 and two and not beat Thomas or be 2-8 and eight and beat Thomas Worthington? <laughs> and the ones that said 2-8 and eight and beat Thomas Worthington were his captains. 
Here's Bowers coming to the near side and again able to square up and turn the corner. But again, that just shows you the importance that's put on the rivalry. And while his team is probably going to come up short tonight with 250 to go down 16 points, it's still those building blocks, Jeff, you need for a program that wants to turn the corner and get back to where it was in its heyday when it had a lot of success. Yeah, well, they'll celebrate this one tonight. They absolutely deserve it. It's been uh, you know, a special evening for this football team. <coughs> Excuse me. They honored Demetrius Stanley, who we lost back in February of this year. Demetrius Stanley, one of the most prolific uh, players to ever come out of Thomas Worthington, went on to Ohio State, part of that Rose Bowl victory, had a Rose Bowl touchdown, and uh, became an advocate for prostate cancer in the community and lost his battle to that cancer in February of this year. Kelly Ann Stitz had a great story on that a little bit earlier tonight on his impact on this Thomas Worthington program. Clock is stopped with 2.10 left in the game here tonight. We have, we have one of those two players down right now. We have a hydration issue. <laughs> a hydration <laughs> issue. There we go. It's a cramp. <laughs> they, both of them. With 2.10 left in the game. Been a lot of tremendous performances in this game tonight. And... We have reached our player of the game portion of the evening this evening. And I would have to thank Greg Keegley of Thomas Worthington falls into that category. Look at those numbers, 16 of 24, 198 yards, a pair of touchdowns. Yes, he did throw two interceptions, but for a freshman quarterback in his second varsity start, and that was a heck of a throw right there, Jeff, to come into a game like this and lead his team to the victory. Pretty safe choice, I think, player of the game. No question about it. 9-23, his first week as a 14-year-old freshman leading the football team. I told you at the beginning of the season, or beginning of the of the game tonight, are you kidding me? You're going to give the keys to the Ferrari to a 14-year-old without a driver's license? Well, let me tell you what, he earned the right to lead this football team. Yeah, think of it. He's going to lead his team to its second victory of the season, and he still needs a ride home after the game tonight. <laughs> 25 to 9 is the score. The lead for Thomas Worthington here as they look to wrap this one up this evening. Don't forget, after the game, we will have you completely covered with ABC 6 on your side news team coming up at 11 o'clock this evening. That's not the moon over Wotown. That is the orb. <laughs> that is the orb, okay. Over Wotown. And Kelly Ann Stitz has got the responsibility of protecting the orb. And off to Bowers, runs through one tackle attempt and is brought down. Is the orb heavy? I, I, haven't, I've never, well, I haven't carried the orb yet. I, I well, know. do you think you even have the right to? Oh, no, of course not. I mean, you haven't been here long enough to touch the orb. I mean, I... <laughs> well, I that, that's where we're going with this, huh? No, no, I, no that's where I, we're going with I've, this. Been, okay. I've been near it once. <laughs> I've been near it once. You don't get just to touch the orb, Marty. It gives off an aura around it. It, well, it does. It, it you, does, yeah. I'll tell you what. Do me a favor. Uh -huh. Get down there and get close and just kind of feel the vibration. Okay. All right. I'll get down there and do that. Uh, yeah. Kelly it, Ann, you know, she controls it. Maybe She's, next week before the game I'll get down there and I'll do that. I doubt it. <laughs> we like to thank our friends at Kroger Great Lakes Distributing Center. And uh, because of that, tonight's game is streaming live on the ABC6 YouTube channel, the ABC News app, and on the CWColumbus.com. You can watch this game anywhere, he said, anywhere. And again, thanks to Kroger Great Lakes Distributing uh, Distribution Center. We are able to stream this game live for you tonight. And we are attempting a field goal. Max LaProd, who earlier boomed a 42-yarder, We'll try this one from 39 yards. This one again is up. It has the distance and it easily clears the crossbar and good. And the lead expands to 28 to nine. Max LeBron, who hit the game winning field goal last week, has been perfect tonight. And the lead goes to 28 to nine with two minutes left for Mike Paquetti's team as they are going to win their third straight game in this Wotown showdown tonight here at Thomas Worthington High School. We'd like to thank all the folks at Thomas Worthington for their hospitality this evening. Wonderful facility here at Hamilton Field. Jeff was talking about the renovations going on all around this facility. They're gonna have a new high school building in the next year or two. They're in the process of completing uh, the footers uh, for that project. And God, I tell you what, they were working 24 seven to get this field ready for the game tonight. Scoring summary. 
brought to you by Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health Board of Franklin County. 13 plays, 48 yards, 5 minutes and 9 seconds, capped off by the LaProd field goal. And the lead at 28 to 9 for Thomas Worthington. Mike Paquetti a little jazzed up over there on the sidelines. Not exactly sure what he's got to be concerned about leading 28 to 9. LaProd's kick. Be brought out. Will be brought. Well, it didn't get into the end zone as Jack Steele was on the goal line when he fielded it. He'll come out across the 30 to the 32 yard line. When I arrived here around 5 o'clock this evening, the heat and humidity was at its height, and this facility is located just across the parking lot from the Worthington City Pool. And there were some folks making their way into the pool earlier this evening. Were you considering? I, I was considering it, yes. I, I was <laughs> Maybe considering a quick it. dip. Yeah. yeah, but see, the problem is that you, you don't want this body out in public. So Understand. <laughs> that doesn't mean we can't go over there for a little late night shot, you know, after we get done that, here. That, I guarantee you that's not happening. Out at the 32 is where Worthington Kilbourne will scrimmage with 152 to go in this one. We talked about what's ahead for Thomas Worthington. Here is Jen Angeli, the throw to the near side. The throw is low for Worthington Kilbourne. Next week, they take on a Groveport team. That, that program is struggling a little bit right now to get back to where they were a couple of years ago. They made a playoff run. But then after that, it gets really no easier for the Kilbourne Wolves. After that, they take on Canal Winchester. Then they have the hard road game we talked about a short time ago. Then it's a trip up to Delaware to face the Pacers. Then Big Walnut comes calling. So it's a, it's a, it's, it's going to be a tough stretch of games coming up here for Kilbourne. But they did show some signs tonight, and they showed some signs last night. And the reason why is this young man's play right here, as Cameron Genangeli keeps running and fighting for yardage as he gets out to the 40-yard line to pick up the bait. Yeah, it seems like for Kilbourne, it's just a matter of consistency. You know, every time that they look like they get a little bit of momentum going, the first drive of that third quarter, they look like world beaters, and then all of a sudden, start making some mistakes out there. <laughs> to the near side, the throw is complete. Out to the 44-yard line. That's a Bowling Green State University first down for the Cardinal offense, or for the Kilbourne offense, I should say. We're trying to wind the clock, and the clock is not winding. Jed Angeli being chased by Francis Brew, who comes racing in to make another tackle. Now, no question the uh, right decision on the uh, player of the game tonight, but I'm going to tell you what, this Francis Brew. We, I talked about in the open. We, I want to see a disruptor, and this kid is disruptive on the defensive side. He makes it very difficult for you to be able to run your offense. And it's very evident why Mike Piketty is so very high on that young man. Chen Angeli to throw. The pass is to the near side. Jack Steele makes the catch. Hits the turf. The ball pop free. The Cardinals say it's there. They're calling it incomplete. Be, yeah, an incomplete pass. So that will stop the clock with 35 seconds left. You know, one of those things where you've got to have possession and making that football move and watch this pretty good throw here. Good throw, good catch. Does he have it long enough? You can see him bobbling the ball a little bit as it came across the middle and it popped out. Probably a good decision by the referees to call that an incomplete pass. That stops the clock with 35 seconds left. So Kilborn will scrimmage with a Third down and 20. Jen Angeli flushed out of the pocket. Heaves this one back across the middle and a low throw that will skip incomplete. Here in Morley was the intended receiver. This game was 14 to six at the half in favor of Thomas Worthington. And if you were with us at the intermission, Michael Edwards of Kilbourne told R. Kelly and Stitz his team just simply needed to make plays in the second half to stay in this game. And that's really where it turned. They were unable to make plays, and Thomas Worthington did make plays in the second half. No, no question about it. Really thought after that first drive that uh, the way that uh, Kilbourne came out, that maybe they would have an opportunity to even things up in this football game, but Thomas Worthington took command. Gavin Scott will come on and punt the football away for Kilbourne. With 27 seconds left. 
Good kick. He has been very effective tonight punting the football. Fair catch is signaled for with 21 seconds left in the game. So it will be taking the formation time, victory formation for Thomas Worthington. And the Cardinals are going to get out of the gate at 2-0. and Last year they won six games. And a good start for Mike Paquetti's team as they will set their sights next week on a trip to Grove City. Make it to 24, first down, 10 yards to go. That Grove City score that we looked at at halftime uh, kind of surprised me because Grove City put up big points in week 59, one. 59, 59. And struggling against Hilliard Davidson tonight, at least through the first half. Davidson always good football defensively. We'll see them next week against the Celtics of Dublin Jerome. Victory Snap, one knee, victory formation, and, and Thomas Kendall. Worthington for the fifth time in the last six tries has knocked off their cross district rivals from Worthington Kilbourne and tonight do it by the final of 28 to nine here at Hamilton Field at Thomas Worthington High School. The Cardinals scored the first time they had the football went right down the field. Worthington Kilbourne was able to answer. They had a chance to tie the game. And, Jeff, you wonder maybe how much this game changed when they missed that extra point attempt with a team that hadn't scored a point in season opener. They're down 7-6, to six, even though they were only down 14-6 at the half. From a, a momentum standpoint, you just wonder if that played into it at all in the first yeah, half just, of this game. It's just too many mistakes, you yeah, know, in, exactly. in the game that, that, that killed some of those drives along the way. So, uh, very impressed with both of these football teams. I think the coaches are doing a terrific job. And uh, I think the future is is bright for both of these football programs, especially when you look at the fact that they may have found a generational quarterback here in number 17, Gray Keegley, starting as a freshman. Mike McKetty's team goes to 2-0, and and they win the Wotown Showdown. Fireworks boom off to the end zone area. 28-9 is our final. Thomas Worthington knocks off Worthington Kilbourne. It's our Toyota Friday Night Rivals matchup. Toyota's national sales event is on. Make the most of summer with a new Toyota. We want the Great Tacoma. Great Tacoma coming in hot. On it. Highlander Hybrid. Highlander Hybrid on the double hang. Here we go. That Red Rav 4. Run a Red Rav 4. Hit the deck. Now that's how you holler. Make some off-road memories in a legendary new 4Runner or the best-selling Tacoma, which you can get with 3.99 APR financing plus two years no-cost maintenance. Come in today. Toyota. Let's go places. 28-9. Thomas Worthington wins the Wotown Showdown over Worthington Kilbourne. Let's head down to the field now where Kellyanne Stitz is standing by. Coach McGetty, quite the scene down here. The student section running in. There's fireworks going on. You beat your rival tonight. What does this one mean to your players in the community? You know, it's always a great time when you're playing a community and you're playing a, a cross-town rival. It's a, it's a great Great game between Mike and I in the community, and we have a lot of respect for them. They have respect for us. But it's great for the community of Worthington in and of itself. So it feels good to get the win. Got to get on the next week and try to get better. Freshman Greg Keegley not really playing like a freshman out here, not spooked by the rivalry or these Friday night lights. How would you assess his performance tonight? You know, I'm, I'm very proud of him. Uh, he's a great young man. He, he grew up a little bit tonight, struggled a little bit last week in his first time, but uh, very happy with the way he played this evening. Defense also making some clutch plays in the second half. A lot to build off of as you guys look forward to week three, right? Absolutely. Uh, you know, we're obviously a young team, and I think we made some leaps and bounds from week one to week two. We just got to keep getting better in week three. Well, congratulations on the win tonight, Coach. And we're going to present you our Friday Night Rivals trophy, what we lovingly refer to as the orb. Where are you going to put this one? Uh, this, one's going in, this one's going in the main uh, athletic office so everybody can see it. So. Thank you so much, Coach, and congratulations. Thank you. Guys. Kelly, and thank you, and congratulations to Mike Paquetti and his Thomas Worthington Cardinals as they win their second straight game and the fifth time in the last six games that they have knocked off their district rivals from Worthington Kilbourne. There's tonight's math, an impressive offensive night for the Cardinals. Jeff Logan, almost 400 yards of total offense and balance as well. Too. Well, I was going to say, look at the balance there. Rushing yards, 197. Pass yards, 198. Obviously, you want to clean up the turnovers a little bit, uh, but tonight is one that I think the Cardinals can celebrate and build on week three. No question about it. As they get ready to head to Grove City next week, Worthington Kilbourne will 
return home and face the cruisers of Grove Pat of Groveport Madison. Next week we will be at Dublin Jerome to watch the Celtics take on Hilliard Davidson. Really looking forward to that one. A couple of teams that really are physical football teams with a lot of athletic ability. Should be a fun one next week as Jeff and I come to you from the northwest part of the Columbus area from Dublin Jerome High School as the Celtics face the Hilliard Davidson Wildcats. Once again our final score tonight 28 to 9 Thomas Worthington knocks off Worthington Kilbourne. That's a wrap on this edition of Toyota's Friday Night Rivals presented by Columbus State Community College. As mentioned, we're back next Friday at 7 o'clock from Dublin Jerome High School for the matchup between the Hilliard Davidson Wildcats and the Celtics of Dublin Jerome. On behalf of Jeff Logan, Kelly Ann Stitz, and our entire CW Columbus crew, I'm Marty Bannister saying once again the final score tonight here at Thomas Worthington. The Cardinals 28, the Wolves of Worthington Kilbourne 9. So long, everyone. Coach Paquetti, you guys beat your rivals tonight, 28 to nine. What does this one mean to the community, but also to your players? You know, it's obviously a, a great win for our kids. Um, the Battle of Worthington every year is, is a big game for the community. Um, it's great to come out on top. You know, we, this is my fourth year in it. Mike's won it a few times. I've won it a few times. So it's a, it's a great game every year, and it means a lot for our.